Let us. Yeah, you should be able to just jiggle the mouse, and you know this is. Yeah, turn it on. One, hold it. One, two, let go. One, two, three. It comes up. Okay. No, this is Terry. Okay, Caroline's here. Okay. She's just chatting. Okay. And you know Maria and Chris. Yes. You, and you know Joyce. Yep. And have you met I'm Caroline? not. Oh, my. But he's going to be calling you. Okay. Good deal. Look at this deal. Yeah. I know. So cute. I love that green shirt. Awesome. Thank you. And if you want me to... Oh, how about the listing presentation? Let me tee yeah, that up. Yeah, we can do that. I'll, I'll do that, too. So... so Are we having virtual ones again today? No, they come in Thursday. Sorry, she was okay. busy. Okay, so today. is anyone coming today? Nobody is coming for lunch today. Okay. Sorry. So we are on our own for lunch today? Mm-hmm. Okay. So we'll be starving. Yeah, you can. I know. I know. I'm we'll just take teasing. Take a break at I'm, just, I'm just teasing. All right, you go ahead. You ready? Okay. All right. Good morning, you guys. Good morning. How's everybody? How's everybody's weekend? Okay. Good. 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 Awesome. Okay. Any good stories? I heard you, Gerard, telling a story, but I didn't get all of it. But I can tell. it was a buyer. Yeah, and um, it's a whole backstory behind it. I had everybody laughing about it a week ago. Um, about she was. Okay, thank you. She was pressing me because she was hitting on me. So, <laughs> fast forward, uh, I just kind of had to have a conversation like, hey, you know, I'm not in here looking for a girlfriend or a wife or whatever. Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm thinking, I'm thinking good in that. In the <laughs> <laughs> so, Currently not holding interviews. Yeah, I'm not, yeah I'm not even taking applications at this time, you know. And um, so we got over that part, but it was just um, everything that we went to go see based on what she was shown me and what she told me she was looking for that's what I was taking her to see right well I don't like it I don't like it and I was like well why you know tell me why I was mm -hmm. like so maybe we can gear our searches mm -hmm. toward what you what you're looking for mm -hmm. and she never could really tell me what it was mm -hmm. so I was like hey is it finances or what? like if it's finances say that and I was like maybe we can scale back the price point mm -hmm. I said but we still can go you know look houses I said but it's not going to have all these bells and whistles that you're looking for I mm -hmm. said because um, what you're looking for is at a 350 400 500 thousand price, dollar point. price point and where's she 205 okay and I was like you're not at a bad price point I said but you're not what you're asking for where the house I live in now has this I said do you own the house <laughs> she said no I'm renting I said exactly Mm -hmm. I said, you're renting. Mm -hmm. I said, so you got to understand this is somebody else's house and you're paying, you're helping them out. Yeah. I guarantee it's not, you won't get the house that you're living in at this price point. Mm -hmm. So we got over that obstacle. And uh, like I was just telling Stacy, we went into this house and she was just like, I don't know. And I was like, well, it has brand new hardwood floors. I said, it's been freshly painted. I said, it has new carpet upstairs, brand new carpet. I said, well, what is the hang up? Well, it has a ding in the garage door, a dent in the garage door. Oh my goodness. And in my mind, I'm like, you got a dent in your head. You know, I'm like, I mean, is, this what you, is this what your hang up is? And then she was like, well, look at these cabinets. And I was like, what's wrong with them? I was uh -huh. like, they're kind of a light wood, like the color of that door. I said, if you don't like them, you can replace them. Right. If you want to, or I said, if you want to change them out, you can change it out. Yeah. And these countertops, I was like, they're new. 
I said, they're not granite. I said, but you can change the granite down right. the road. Right. Mm -hmm. I said, don't block your blessing over some over some cosmetic stuff right. that you're not going to find. So you're never going to get a house. I said, and these prices, I said, they're going to go up. Mm -hmm. I said, so the more the price increase, the worse the house you're going to get at this price point. Mm -hmm. What area is she in? Lithonia. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. so she wanted to do Snellville, and I showed her two beautiful homes in Snellville. Mm -hmm. Well, the yard is too small. I have a dog. And I was like, okay. okay. I said, but this house, the yard is much smaller than the house that you turned down in Snellville. I said, so are you really, is that what you're really, is that the real problem? Right. Did she ever pass up to what the real problem was? No. Okay. So did you have the opportunity to have a buyer's consultation with her before you went out with her? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, she was telling me everything she was looking for, and and I just told her what we were going to do, and you know, how the process was going to work. You know, um, even though I'm new at it, I mm -hmm. just try to cover as many as many bases as I possibly could. Did you get on FMLS with her at your buyer's consultation? Um, no, I didn't. That's one of the things that really helps get mm -hmm. a um, buyer and a seller to understand the market. Mm -hmm. If you sit down with them and get on FLS with them and sh they now, when you've got that up and they're looking at it, now they get to see with their own two eyes mm -hmm. what the market is really like and what they're really gonna get for the price point that they're in. Mm -hmm. Because for whatever reason, um, they seem to think that we want to up their price, right? Because it's more commission for us, mm -hmm. although they're not going to qualify. Right. You know, so that's not what we do. Mm -hmm. but, but people have to see things with their own two eyes. So you might want to try that, you know, okay. and everything. Okay, so did um, you guys do your 10 4 for the week? Are you reporting your 10 4 out for no. the week? But we went out and basically um, went to some open houses. Okay, good. And yeah, we had a like good time doing that. Okay. We could do uh, three houses during the weekend. We went to three open houses. Okay, good. Good, good, good. All right. So, um, did, did, good morning. Does everybody know what their what the ten four is? What you're supposed to be doing? Yes. Okay. All right. So, but no one's doing it. Um. Okay. All right. So think about that because this is getting one of the reasons for this class actually is to get you in the habit of doing things that you should be doing on a, you know, weekly basis, even daily basis, actually, is just getting in that habit. Okay. So um, what have you guys learned so far? From the open houses? No, just from Ignite. So what... Oh. Ignite, mm -hmm. we uh, took the class and find your business. Okay. Uh, we learned a lot in that class, how to like market ourselves, maybe little details, pops by. Okay. Um, we also took it, we learned about Kelly, the app that is coming okay. out. Uh, what else we learned? We also learned about the database. Okay. How to put together the database and classify. Okay. Good, 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 good. So, have y'all gotten your database up and going yet? Anybody? I keep working on that. Okay. All right. <clears throat> all right. So, all right. So, we're going to talk about getting your head in the game. What's so important about getting your head in the game? For us, getting our head in the game, mm -hmm. just like focus on learn. Out the, like you were saying, just getting the, the habit. Of doing things mm -hmm. for us to find business, mm -hmm. that's really, really gonna generate. It's gonna give us in the habit of lead generating. Mm -hmm. That's really gonna bring us business. Yeah, by being organized and doing our ten four. It's so Good. important because it's a numbers game. Yes. And if you are not making your phone calls, if you're not making the touch points to all your database and getting your name recognition on a consistent basis, then you're not gonna create lead gen. That's correct. You're very good. Very good. Okay. So just so we're clear, when I ask questions, this is a participating class. It's not just sit there and not say anything, okay? So because we're going to learn from each other throughout this whole day today. Well, not the whole day, but three hours of today. Okay. 
So, um, anybody else have any more comments on getting your head in the game? Yes, ma'am. I find that getting my head in the game is easier if I am in a relaxed place. In a relaxed place. Yeah. Okay. So I'm not in a relaxed state yeah. or a re yeah. relaxed well, environment? Like both. Both. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Good. Good. Okay. All right. So, sellers. What do you, what have y'all learned in regards to um, what's the most important thing? Buyers or sellers? Both. 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 Okay. What gives you the most leverage? Sellers. Buyers or sellers? sellers? Depends on the market. Sellers. Sellers are always going to give you the most leverage. Really? Yes. Always. Even in a down market. The reason that sellers are going to give you uh, more leverage is because you have your sign in the yard and you've got advertising on all of the all of the websites you've got you know which is free advertising once you take a listing your listing is spidered out to over 300 websites so you're on Zillow you're on Redfin you're on realtor.com you're on all the KW websites you know so the more listings you have the more advertising you're doing for yourself. And it's really like free advertising. Really? So it's always going to give you more leverage. Huh. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So you don't have to spend that much time. When you're with a buyer, you need to set up like, um, I was the showing them houses that will take like an entire day of your of your time, but then like driving around and. Correct. Yeah, yeah correct. It's because a buyer can actually, you can spend a lot of time with a buyer before you ever even get them under contract. And then, just because you get them under contract doesn't mean that it's actually going to close. Hello. Okay, so you can even get to the closing table and it blow up at the closing table, okay? Mm -hmm. So, but typically when you have a seller, if you're doing all the things that you should be doing for a seller to market the property, then your weekends are free, your nights are typically free, and you've got another agent that's working with that buyer bringing it, you know? You can be on vacation and making money because you've got listings sitting there. So listings are always going to give you more leverage and more freedom too, as a matter of fact. So the goal of the game is to be a listing agent, okay. more so than a buyer's agent. Yes, sir. I didn't mean to cut you. I just want, I oh, no, that's I just want to ask a question um, or just an observation. Um, like with companies like Open Door and mm -hmm. Knock and... Mm -hmm. um, what is the other one of the other companies? Zillow. Yeah, mm -hmm. where they have um, the app where now you can, you know, people can now download the app and just pull up on a house, mm -hmm. and then it says, you know, instant access, and they give them a code. Right. Um, and then what? They're only charging like maybe one percent or something like that to to list. It's, so that's a false. That's okay. A falsehood. Okay. Okay. Um, and. I can I know for um, a fact that Zillow mm -hmm. is really charging the seller anywhere from nine to ten percent. Okay. Okay. Because and I don't want to get off on this tangent. Right, right, right. But but those are falsehoods. Okay. okay. So like for instance, um, if you listen to the commercial and you read the billboards, it'll say it'll say the listing fee mm -hmm. is like one percent. Oh. Okay, listing fee, but then they're adding in the buyer fee, right, which is another 3% typically. Okay, so now you're at 4%. Not only that, they're charging for repairs, mm -hmm. okay, and not too long ago, someone that went through, okay, uh, not too long ago, someone, um, it was a couple of sales meetings ago, um, someone in our office was representing the buyer and the seller had sold to Zillow. This happened at the closing and Zillow hit them up with an $8,000 repair bill. bill at closing, which they did not expect whatsoever. And so that caused the closing to be delayed because now they were $8,000 short to buy the next house. Oh my goodness. So they had to go out and scramble. So all of this stuff is, you know, getting to know the facts about some of these other companies mm -hmm. will be um, very valuable for you. And so I would do some homework on that. 
Gotcha. Yeah, so, so you can know what your competition is. When Redfin and Open Door are, are saying we only charge the we only charge you one percent to list your house, mm -hmm. well, that's true, but they're also charging everything else. Correct, and right. they're and, and they're the not the day. Include, when they say that they're not including what you have to pay to the buyer's agent, which is typically three percent. Right. Okay. okay. So that's just crap. That's just yeah. marketing crap. It's okay. yeah, it's marketing. Okay. Okay. So Thank um you. oh yeah, you're welcome. Um okay. So what so let's say now you've got a prospect, someone that wants to list their house. What do you think the next thing would be for you to do? Go meet with them, buy them coffee. Have a chat, go to the house, look okay. at it ahead of time. Hopefully, okay. goodness. Okay. So, you know. Okay. Good. Um, do some comps. Do some comps. Yeah, so okay. some comps in the, in the area. Okay. To see, and then look at their house versus you know everything else in the area. Look at the condition. Um, you can't really give them a hard number, but you can just kind of give them a guesstimate. I would say. Of what it may go for, and then have somebody really come in and, I guess, do an appraisal or something like that. Okay. All right. So let's talk about all of this. Okay. So the very first thing that you want to do when you have a prospect, let's say your prospect is on the phone. All right. First thing you want to do, and I have a call log that I can email to everybody so that you will have this in front of you when you're talking to somebody, and so you can remember. So let's say that it's somebody that has called you. The first thing you want to do is ask them how they found out about you. Why do you think that's important? You need to track. Yes, exactly. You need to, you you need need to know to where. Correct. What has been effective and, mark, and track your marketing goals. Correct. Correct. And if somebody's referred them that you know, you could call that person and say thank you for that. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. You want to find out if it's a referral. Because the name of the game is getting your business to 99% referrals. When you get there, then you're, you know, you're rocking and rolling, okay? So, so you want to ask them the questions. Now, the other thing that you, the other questions that you want to ask, you want to ask them, um, how much do you think your house is worth, right? How much do you owe on your house? Right? What are you going to do? Are you going to stay in the area? Or are you moving out of state, right? So the more questions that you ask them, the more that you will understand their motivation, right? So <clears throat> then after you ask all the pertinent questions and find why would it be so important to find out how much their house, how much they own their house? Because that way you know where their position is financially. You know how much they're going Correct. to sell it for. You know how much they need to pay off their loans. You know how much Correct. they're going to need to buy another house. Correct. If that's the situation, if they're 1030 wanting, I mean, you don't know what they're doing. Correct. You don't know what they're doing. So it's always important to ask a question. If they, and here's the other reason it's so important for you to know. So let's say that they owe 200000 on their house, okay? And you do the comps and you see that the highest price home in there has sold at 175 What do you think you're going to do? Because they're not going to net enough to even pay your commission. They would actually have to come to the closing table with money. Okay. But don't discount them. Okay. Because right. some people can come to the table with the money. Okay, to get rid of that house, all right? So, but it's always important to ask as many questions as you possibly can. And if y'all will, yes, Chris? In those scenarios, people are usually pretty self-aware in terms of the market enough to know that they're, gonna, they're underwater in their house. No. No? No. So it, it's a total surprise when they... It, is, it can be a total surprise, but this is, this is uh, what I have done in the past. Yes. Um, so in 2000, I think it was 2012, uh, a couple called us off of our website and we went out there to meet with them and their house that they wanted to put on the market, they had been renting and they, they had, in the meantime, they were renting this house and they had bought a town home and the reason that they had to rent this house in the first place is because they got relocated. 
So, so they had a renter in there and then uh, the renter moved out and so they decided they wanted to sell it. Now this was out in Powder Springs. I don't know if y'all know where Powder Springs mm -hmm. is or not, but it's West Cobb. So um, we did the, you know, we knew how much they owed on the house and we did the comps and they were $50,000 underwater. Mm -hmm. So when, and I don't discuss any of this stuff on the phone. I'm just asking questions, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Because you don't want to go into commission, you don't want to go into pricing, mm -hmm. or any of that type of stuff over the phone. Ever, 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 ever. You don't tell them your marketing plan or anything over the phone. So went out there to meet with them and showed them the comps and explained to them that you know what they were going to net, they were gonna have to bring $50,000 to the closing table. They could not do that, so we agreed to help them get it rented again. Okay, this was in 2012. So in February, Angela calls me and says, okay, we're ready to sell the house. Can you do run comps for me? Well, they're just now, that area has just now gotten up to somewhat of, of a place to where they're going to at least be able to walk away with ten to $15,000 this time, this time around. So that's why you don't discount it you still want to go and talk to them and create that relationship with them because you never know. You know, here it is seven years later and I'm, you know, and not only that, I, we listed their townhome. When they got transferred to Maryland, we listed their townhome and got that one sold for it too. So it's about building that relationship, right? Yes, Chris. If you get, you just mentioned never going to the marketing plan, price, commission over the phone. If you right. get a person on the phone who's like, well, I've already talked to two, uh, real estate agents and they, this one person is going to give me two percent uh, at that point on the phone how do you overcome that obstacle since you brought up the commission um, I always just say you know what that's a great question and I'll be happy to go over the commission with you when we meet in person okay, okay. and then they're gonna say typically they'll say um, well can you tell me what we're gonna discuss well I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna market your home and get it or your house I should say I'm going to show you how we're going to market your house to get it sold. And, well, can you tell me that over the phone? Um, actually, I cannot. There's too much information on how I'm going to market your house to get it sold. So I'll see you at 1 o'clock on Saturday. You know, so that's, that's kind of how that conversation will go. That's great. Yeah, okay. yeah. So, um, but people <laughs> will press you. Exactly. You know, yeah. they're going to press you. Nope. But if you stand firm and, you know, you just have the right answers. And it just takes time and practice, sure. you know, to get to there. Okay. So, pre-qualifying the seller. We're actually on page 13. All right. And, um, oh, actually, here's the call log right here on the back on page 14 of when the seller. There's the call log that I was talking about. Okay. So, all right. So, now I've got a seller appointment. I've scheduled that. What is the next thing I'm going to do after I've scheduled the appointment? Call off. Pardon me? Call off with them. I'm going to send the pre-listing packet. Okay. So you're um, that we're talking about. We're on page 15 now. Pre-listing packet. Okay. What is a pre-listing packet? Anyone know what a pre-listing packet is? You will send them some information that they need to read about, and also send them the two forms. Uh, one is the disclosure mm -hmm. form, and mm -hmm. the other one is the H, um, don't remember the... Community <laughs> Association, H yeah, the, yes, the yes. Community yes. Association. Yes. Okay, so a pre-listing uh, pre packet, I promise you, if you do this, you can win the seller because the majority of agents are not sending pre-listing packets. They're just not doing it. They don't take the time to do it. They don't think it's important. But if you send the pre-listing packet, it will cut down the length of time that you're at the person's house, and it also explains things to them thoroughly in that pre-listing packet, and it also helps them to think of things that they want to ask you when, you when you get there, okay? For instance, one of the questions in the pre-listing packet, it says, things you might want to consider asking your realtor or your real estate agent. Are you a full or part-time agent? Right. Most people don't think that way. Right. Um, and then in the pre-listing packet that KW has, 
there is a list and I have one too that I'll be happy to send to everyone that you can edit and make it your own but the uh, there's a list of 47 different things to do about your house to get it sold so the pre-listing packet is pretty lengthy um, and but it again it gives you a whole lot of information and it also gives you the opportunity to tell them it's all about them right it gives you the opportunity to ask them what's most important to them okay what are you looking for in an agent you know? so they can discuss that with you when you get there on the appointment <clears throat> so what what would your letter look like okay, so you've got an introductory letter along with your pre-listing packet what are what are some of the things you would say in your letter I would say thank you for like taking the time to meet with me. Very good. Um, yes. I would also say that I'm sending them this information for them to be informed mm -hmm. and think about the different questions that they can come up mm -hmm. or like have a like better um, I don't know, understanding of the what they want to do, mm -hmm. and what they are looking for. Good. And please take the time to read this before we meet. Yes. Where they, like you just said, we they've done some of the due diligence that you don't have to go back over it and mm -hmm. you can focus on more important things. Yes, things. yes, yes. That's exactly right. There's actually a sample on page 16 for you. And it talks about how I will help you by taking time to understand your wants, needs, and expectations, answering your questions, returning your phone calls, helping you attain the highest price possible, advising you on product pricing and staging, uh, implementing a comprehensive marketing plan, coordinating the home showing process, presenting all offers, negotiating on your behalf, scheduling and coordination the completion of contingencies and inspections, monitoring the buyer's loan process, coordinating and supervising the preparation of all real estate closing documents and guiding you through the closing process, and then during the entire listing from start to finish, always representing your best interest. It's all about you. So you could take that letter and make it your own. Mm, but this is a good example. I'm sorry, Ms. Terry, I'm not following you. Sorry for Oh, okay, that's me. okay. We're it's on in this book, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we're on page um, 16. Yeah. Um, the when the seller. Yeah, yeah chapter four. Session, four. Session, two, Session right? four. Session four. 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 Oh, no wonder. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you get missing classes. I'm sorry for Oh, no problem. Oh. That is no problem at all. Okay. <laughs> so one of the things that I used to do with my pre-listing packet, because it's pretty good size, is I would not email that to them. I would actually FedEx it to them, but I did not FedEx it. I just put it in a FedEx envelope. Because if you're, if you're busy, okay, and you're going to several listing appointments a week, then FedEx and packets get to be expensive. Mm -hmm. So either myself or my son would deliver the packet and we would put it on their front doorstep. But how many people do you know if they see a FedEx packet on their front doorstep that they ignore it? Nobody. No. Okay, so is that better to do than to email it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, That's a great yeah. idea. Yeah. So no you one just can go to FedEx. FedEx. Yeah. Right. You can go to FedEx and get the envelopes. They're happy to give them to you. They're for free. Oh, okay. okay. And then you just stuff it in there <laughs> and go and put it on their doorstep. All right. All right. We have a big, huge something. I guess you could just get one of the boxes because they have them. If you wanted to. Yeah. You, if you wanted to, absolutely. Do you ever that would use be cool for a for flyers and other stuff you're trying to get? <laughs> no, but that is kind of a good, That's a good idea, idea right there. That's a good idea right there. Uh, yeah. I'm just going to, anything that I want to get uh, in front of somebody from now on, I'll just use a FedEx package. That's that sounds it. great. Yeah. And they make, I tell you what, we use them at the ranch. It's a 501c3 nonprofit. Yeah. We use those and the ones you can get at the post office for all of our little file holders. Mm -hmm. mm. There yeah. you go. That's it's pretty easy. cool. And when you have a, like if you have a larger package for uh -huh. a property, I'll bet you a, any commercial guy that has his stuff for sale would not throw away a FedEx box. Oh yeah, absolutely not. 
Absolutely not. That's a really good idea. <laughs> maybe maybe I'm he's just a silver FedEx shirt, so when he drops hey. out of the bag, he can get out the ring doorbell or something. Like, what is this? Hey, I'm FedEx. Yeah. So. Yeah. Great. Now, now you're... In order to differentiate from y'all, I'm going to start using UPS because I know you guys are going to be using. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you can't do the UPS ones too, yeah. for sure. Yeah. <laughs> or even um, priority mail from the post yeah. office. Post office. Yeah, they had the priority mail envelopes too. Yeah, that's what we use. Yeah, because the post office right around the corner. Yeah. From where we yeah. are. Just whatever you don't don't use the IRS package. Yeah, do you not yes. do that. Do you not do that. People will not want to. Do that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, so what? I got an IRS boxes. package. No, I don't think about that. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, I can't keep saving our yeah. boxes. Wouldn't that be cool? Yeah. An Amazon shirt, little Amazon yeah. box. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, there you go. There you go. So also on in that packet, you know, you're giving your information. Your bio needs to be in there not your marketing i want to make this very clear your marketing what you're going to do to market the house does not go in your pre-listing packet okay and you never ever 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 leave your marketing packet behind with the seller whether they sign the listing agreement or not that is your way that you're going to get their house sold if they refuse to sign the listing agreement with you that night because they're average they're interviewing other agents what do you think the other agent is going to say when they see your marketing packet mm. let me show you how i can do better than this right and i will do all that stuff too well the truth of the matter that's not necessarily true that they'll do all the things that you're going to do but they'll say it right to get the business. Right, to get the business. So, um, even if they sign on, don't leave it with them either? Don't leave it with them. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Take that with mm -mm. you. Mm -mm. Yeah. Okay. So, getting ready to list, here is uh, what will it sell for? This is like so tiny, I can't hardly well, read it. How will you, how will you tell, if, what if they ask to read the package? How will you handle that? Oh, wow. That's a great question because I've had that asked. Yeah, I mean, yeah. How, how do you talk? It's really hard for me to say no. So I'm like, how do I say no without saying we're, no? We're working on that. Because <laughs> you have yeah, to in okay. sales. Well, for instance, okay, so here's a scenario, a true story. So um, go over to a listing appointment. The outside of the house looks great because they've done a lot of stuff to, you know, they have replaced the siding with hardy planks and, you know, the landscaping looks great. It's got great curb appeal. Walk into the house and it is avocado green. And when I say avocado green, the ceiling oh, no. is also avocado green. Oh All of it? Everything? The entire house, except for the kids' bedrooms, and they're black. No. Oh, no. No. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Oh, they're literally an avocado. Oh my gosh. All right. So, of course, when I go to a listing appointment, I have my listing paperwork and everything, and I already have the price on the listing typed in there. All right. Because I know that my price is the right price. Period. I know. Because I've already asked them the pre qualification questions. I've asked them. You know what is your square footage? I see here, you know, that the tax records are showing it's 2,200 square feet. Have you added on anything that has HVAC running to it, right? So if they say yes, you know, okay, I see you're on a basement. Is your basement finished? No. Yes. Okay. So um, have you done any upgrades to the kitchen? Because you bought the house in 1981. When was the last upgrade that you did, right? No upgrades. Okay, there we go. That tells me. Yes, we put granite, you know, and new countertops and our new ca kitchen cabinets, new appliances, so forth and so on. Okay, hardwoods throughout, all that. So those are questions that you're going to be asking in your pre, you know, before you go out there, right? All the questions that you can think of in this sense, what you want to think of is yourself as a buyer, right? And wanting to know all about that house if you think of it that way you know what do I want in a house what are buyers wanting today so those are all the questions that you're going to ask the seller 
So now I know, so I've got the price on the listing agreement of this avocado greenhouse, right? Mm -hmm. Walk in, never expected to see an avocado green, right? So we're doing, I'm walking through the house, looking at the house, and then not only was the, it was really pretty nasty in there too as well. Get down to the basement, and the basement is wall to wall, all the way from floor to at least this high, of nothing but fish tanks, and gerbil tanks, and snake tanks, and spider tanks, and I am not exaggerating. No way. Yes. It was a zoo. It was a zoo. And the hardwood right floors there. were so scratched up because the kids were running in and out with cleats on in the mm. hardwood floor. So anyway, so I sit down to the table with her and I start talking to her and asking her what she's willing to do. You know, are you willing to paint the, the house because the avocado green has got to go, the ceiling needs to be white, and the, the kids' rooms, and then here's the other issue, the basement. All of that has got to be cleared out. And not only are you going to have to clear that out, you're going to have to get somebody in here to chemically clean it to get the smell out, right? Because it was awful. Mm. And there is no way that you're going to sell a house with that smell being in there. So she agreed to do everything, but didn't like my price. And I said, the price that I have here on this listing agreement is exactly the price that the rest of the houses have closed for in here and I cannot go any higher yes but that house down there didn't have this and this house blah 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 I, I well actually this house did this house is completely upgraded let me show you the pictures of it and so I've got the comps and everything and I'm going over the comps and showing her the pictures so everything and so and I said not only that if we were to price this Ten to fifteen, twenty thousand dollars higher the way that you want to. It's not going to appraise. So she just refused, and I said, "Well, thank you so much for your time. You know, good luck. What? You're not taking the listing? No, ma'am. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I'm not. Well, what do you mean you're not, ma'am? You know, this is what I do for a living, and I am going to have to spend money up front." to market your house to get it sold, which means professional photog photographs, video, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> text writer, all the things that it takes to get your house sold. So that money does not get paid back to me until I get to the closing table and I actually close. Mm -hmm. And so if I'm gonna overprice it, which I know it's not gonna sell, there's no reason for me to take your listing. Now, if you wanna agree to this price, then we can move forward. No, 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 that's underpricing. Okay, well, thank you. You know, good luck. Or are you gonna leave your marketing packet with me? No, ma'am, I don't leave that with anyone. Mm-mm, mm, -mm. mm, -mm. No. That's simple. You yeah. just, you gotta learn to be strong and stand. Mm -hmm. Because the worst thing, the worst thing that can ever happen to you is take an overpriced listing, your sign sit, remember when I said that your yeah. listings are leverage, mm -hmm. your listings are advertising. Mm -hmm. If that sign is sitting in that yard for a long period of time. It's also bad advertising. Right, that's bad advertising. Yes, Chris. Who is the best comps in this office? Is there any, I guess there's probably not a best person, but because obviously what you're saying is that getting the price and knowing that price is so important mm -hmm. when you're listening, it's the key to everything. Mm -hmm. When yes. we're coaching together, I'll teach you how to do a CMA. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna also do that in here, okay. but then I go into depth, you know, the details, the details and everything. Yeah, we'll do a lot of them. Okay. okay. Yeah. So does that make sense? Okay, so I know also it's going to be really, really hard being a new agent walking away from a listing. I promise you it'll be a bigger headache taking an overpriced listing than taking the listing that is priced correctly. Because the last thing you want to is that seller calling you every other day. Why is it my household? Why is it my household? Why is it my household? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then if you think, you know how they say good news travels 
slow, but bad news travels really fast. Oh yeah. You have now become the enemy agent of the neighborhood because <laughs> the neighbor has told everybody that you don't do your job and you haven't sold a house and the neighbor is not about to tell the other neighbor that it's because it's overpriced, right? Right, they'll, out, they'll, they'll never tell the whole story. Correct, mm -hmm. that <laughs> is correct. That's not gonna happen. Yeah, that's correct. So you just have to stand strong and the, the stronger you stand, the better off you'll be in the long run, I promise. Okay. How Wait, can I, have a, what can I ask a quick working? question? Or either it never got changed. Yes, ma'am. Can I ask a quick question for yes, you? Yes, ma'am. Let's say that you're just nervous, as all Billy Jack, you know what, and yes. you just can't muster, you know, no. I'm mm -hmm. not taking listing, and no, I'm not leaving my mm -hmm. marketing plan with you, and, it, you know, that kind of thing. Could you fall back and, you know, say, listen, it's, you know, my policy? Do you say it's, you know, can you say it's my broker's policy or my, 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 my coach said not to? I mean, you know what I'm saying? It's like a lot of times people just aren't. If you want to blame it on me, you, you know, they're blame not, it on me. Yeah, don't I mean, blame it on the, on the broker. Okay, but you know, like, is it a is it a thing that all of us in this office do? Is what I'm trying to figure out. No. Or is it just people individualize what they want to do? Yeah, you do own it? your own business, so you're running your own business. So if you choose to take an overpriced listing, that is totally up to you. You can take an overpriced listing, then you can leave your marketing plan. I'm just teaching you best practices. So, but it'll be. So if yeah. somebody, no, like I'm saying, if, if somebody's just really not able to say that it's their decision right now mm -hmm. can they also say well listen you know I, I work with Terry and mm -hmm. she is my opportunity goddess and coach so mm -hmm. bottom line this is the practice you this is what we're doing she's done it for years mm -hmm. this is what we're sticking to you can you can always blame it on me I don't have a problem with that at all. <laughs> mm -hmm. so that way until we're you know yeah confident mm -hmm. we can yeah. say hey yeah yeah, I don't, yeah, I, you can blame it on me all day long. I don't care because I'm, I've been doing this 21 years. Mm. So I know. What you know. Yeah, what I know. Question. Yes, sir. With the uh, listing packet or the lead listing presentation, um, is yours, is it something tangible or do you have it digital where we can do it on a laptop or iPad or something? I have it both ways. Gotcha. Okay. But for me, what I really like to do is I, I have mine in a notebook mm -hmm. um, and I like to flip it while I'm talking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Because you can watch the person's expression more so when you have it in front of them and you're able to flip it than a laptop and you're trying to make it scroll down. But that's my personal okay. preference. Okay. 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 Right. Um, okay. So um, the other thing that is in a pre listing packet is getting ready to sell, right? So which is pretty awesome because it talks about condition, right? Condition of the house. So what is important about condition of the house? Uh, <laughs> if the condition is lovely, then nine times out of 10, it will sell faster, better, easier. If the condition has challenges, significant challenges, then you need to be aware of if the seller is planning to uh, resolve any of those things mm -hmm. um, or not. Mm -hmm. True. Just like the avocado greenhouse. Right? With the black ceiling. What? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, I will never forget that story. <laughs> <laughs> And there, there have been times, actually, um, that I have priced homes to sell as is, okay? Because sometimes it's better for the sellers to do it that way than for them to put the repairs in. So that takes, that takes time getting to know how to do that. Um, and, but, it, but, you know, it's something that you'll learn over time how to do that how to be able to say, well, you need to put in, you know, $20,000 worth of repairs, but unfortunately, that's not going to make you, you know, any, you're not, you're not going to get the return out of, out of it, right? 
because that's going to max out what the rest of the subdivision is selling at. So you're better off to just not do the repairs, let's put it on the market as is, and advertise it that way. So, but that's, that's other stuff that we can talk about, especially in coaching and everything. We can, you know, go through all those types of CMAs and everything together. Okay, so, but condition does sell the house. And what else sells the house? What's the second thing? Location. 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 So the fr actually, that's the third thing. What's the first thing that sells a house? Price. 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 Second? Condition. 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 And third? Okay. Location. Location. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Um, all right. So in when you are touring the house, so this is what I used to do. So I would take a folder in like this and I would have the FMLS printout sheet in the folder and if y'all don't know what the FMLS printout sheet is it's actually the guide of um, what all is in the house do you guys know what I'm talking about okay so it's a printout sheet and there's and it's uh, it has the address mm -hmm. it has whether it's gas stove, you know, microwave included, dual sinks and all this. So it's a check mark list, right? So I always had that in the folder with me and I would get to the house and, hey, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, I'm here at three o'clock, just like you asked me to be, all right? So I walk in and then I, I, and I see that they've got my pre-listing packet on the kitchen table. So I'm like, yes, right? So um, then I say to them, let me go ahead and take a tour of the house. Well, let us walk with you. The, the seller will say, okay, let me, let me show you around. I would say, oh, thank you so much for offering, but I would really prefer to view the house myself so that I can see it through the buyer's eyes, okay? And here's the reason why you wanna do it that way. Have you ever gone into someone's house and you're you know they're really happy about how they t retiled the bathroom floor or whatever and you just think it's as ugly as it can be mm -hmm. all right but you gotta say you know oh yeah that looks great right mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. okay so if you're in front of a seller and they're showing off all the little handyman work stuff that they've done well they're gonna like expect you to say something and you're gonna be caught in between a rock and a hard place and you're gonna say oh that looks great then when you get all this feedback about how ugly the tile is from agents that are showing the house now you've got to go back to the seller and tell the seller the truth and the seller's gonna say but you told me it looked great mm -hmm. see so to avoid that, just go, you know what? That is so nice of you to offer to show me the house, but I really would like to see it through a buyer's eyes, all right? Mm -hmm. So if y'all would just have a seat, I'll be right back. And if I have any questions, I'll let you know, mm -hmm. right? And they'll typically, you know, they'll typically mm -hmm. be fine with that. I've never had anybody do otherwise. So you went down to that basement with tarantulas and everything by yourself? I had no idea it was down no there. Break. Actually, it wasn't by myself, surprised. it was with my partner though. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, but yeah. No, but you think that's funny. Okay, so I had, this was many, many, many years ago. I had a young girl, she was a first time home buyer, and, um, you know, we went into a house and it, and it was great. Like the whole upstairs and everything was great. It was awesome. She was really loving it. We go into the basement, I flip the light, and no kidding, all around the entire basement were snakes Jesus. in the tanks. She screamed so loud and ran out of that house so fast, you would have thought that, like, you know, one is bitter or something. I mean, I am telling you, she was sitting in my car by the, before I get, get back up, turn off the lights and get back up there. She was like, no way. No way, no way. And here's the funny thing. So we finally, when we found her, her house, um, after about two weeks after she moved in, there was a snake mm. living in her crawl space. No. No yes. way. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. So she had to call the predicators to come and get that snake. And she's like, what is it with me and snakes? 
<laughs> well, maybe she needs to look at what that is. Because <laughs> apparently she's attractive. Or something. Yeah, yeah, something, something. Okay. Oh. She needs a good garden implement. <laughs> That's all. It's a good garden implement. Oh. Okay, so talking to the seller about conditions sometimes can really put you in an odd position, right? And especially if you're not comfortable with telling them that they've got to take all their family pictures down, they need to like declutter, you know, what they think is cutesy isn't cute, right? Mm -hmm. To the buyer, right? Mm -hmm. So sometimes explaining that to them can be difficult and sometimes you may feel like you're offending that person. So sometimes people choose to hire a stager and have the stager come in there and tell the seller all the things they need to do. And so it's kind of taking it off your plate, mm -hmm. right? However, you got to remember it costs to hire a stager, right? And so now the expenses are coming off your bottom line, right? And depending on the price point, staging isn't always necessary, you know? So you just have to be able to, to judge that. Okay, but for the most part, it, people will listen to you, and that pre listing packet talks about all that stuff in there, too. The things to do to get your house ready. Yes, Chris, do you have a price point where you personally will not stage versus stage just because you know that based on the commission and everything else? I mean, it's just not typically in anything for me that's mm -hmm. under 400, I won't stage. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so. Um, yeah, so that pre-listing packet, it has all that stuff in there about decluttering, taking things down and, you know, getting things out of the way and plugging up the nail holes and all that. If it's artwork on the walls, that's fine, but it's just the family photos. I've literally taken people into people's houses before and all they want to do is look at the photos. They are not really <laughs> looking at the house, you know, they're looking at everybody else, at the, everyone's the life that's going on in the house and they can't de they cannot detach from that they cannot picture the buyer cannot picture their stuff in there because of all the other stuff that's in there make sense yeah mm -hmm. okay all right so um here's an about me page which is on 21 okay so this is um talks about your value proposition so what is a value proposition what you can bring to the table? What you can bring to the table. I would yeah. differentiate you from the rest. Yes, exactly. Exactly. So I would really highly recommend that you come up with a 30 second commercial, something that speaks to you, something um, that you feel like if you were hiring an agent to work with you, what kind of qualities would you want in that agent to work with you? So internalize that and make it your own. So when you're talking to people, you've got that 30 second commercial. You know, mine was, mine was always, we help people with their dreams. Well, what do you mean by that? Well, we help people to sell their house and we help people to, to buy their dream home. Pretty easy. It doesn't have to be that difficult. So sometimes we think too much. Don't get so into your head. You know what I mean? Okay. Um, talks about inserting your ge geographical areas of expertise. And you really want, one of the things I will tell you about listing property is the closer to home on a listing property, the better off you're going to be. Why do you think that might be important? What? The closer to where you live should be oh, yeah. where you want to list. But why do you feel like that might be important? Because now you already know the area. When you know the area, right? Time. Time, right? Because if somebody calls you on a Sunday afternoon and you've gone and you don't live in Snailville and you've taken a listing in Snailville and you live in uh, Marietta, okay, or you even live in Dunwoody, how long is it gonna take you to get to Snailville? If somebody calls you and they say, hey, I just saw your listing and I really want to see it. Can I see it this afternoon? What's the next question you're gonna ask? What time? No. <laughs> no. Are you working with Are an you agent? With an agent? Okay. Are you working with an agent? Mm -hmm. Okay. And the majority of the time, they're going to tell you no, whether they are or not. 
they're going to tell you no. So now you go all the way out to Snailville. So it's Sunday afternoon. You're with your baby, right? And you're with Chris at the pool. And so you turn to Chris and say, hey, I got to go and show this house out in Snailville. Two hours. And you like, what, 30 minutes to get out there, 30 minutes to show the house, you know, another 30 minutes to get home or whatever. Yeah. You get out there, you show them the house, and now you're talking to that buyer. What do you think comes up? Well, I might want to put an offer on it, so I'm going to call my cousin who happens to be an agent, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Or, thanks for so much for showing me this house today. My agent is out of town. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, because if they want to see it, they're going to tell you what they think you want to. Yeah. Right. So, that's another reason to stay within, you know, if you're like a five mile radius or 10 mile radius or wherever, you know, instead of having to be like 30 miles away. It's a lot easier to handle. Plus, a lot of times too, if the house is vacant, you need to be checking on that house on a regular basis because vacant houses tend to get little bugs and you know, they just, it just happens. Okay. All right, um, so the about me, make sure that you have your picture on the about me page okay and just because you're a brand new agent doesn't mean that you don't have stuff to say about you and you can actually pull in stuff about the market center to put in there right okay all right now what is this one we're gonna listen to this Ugh. Okay, this is actually the um, listing presentation template, and you can download this. You can, what I would also suggest, this is not the pre-listing, this is the listing presentation <clears throat> template. What I would suggest is taking that picture if you've got a listing like you get the listing appointment today and it's not until saturday i would go and ride by that house and take a picture with my cell phone and put the picture of their house on that front page okay. if you don't want to do that just make sure that you've got a picture that's similar to our area for instance if it's a contemporary house like because you'll see some houses that are at the beach on these on photos on stock photos on KW you'll see beach houses you'll see contemporary houses you'll see houses like you see in California that's not really our area right if you know it's a traditional house find a traditional house picture to put in there make sense mm -hmm. okay and then rooted in the community this is all about you right here and your value the value proposition you know your needs coming first visualize your dream scenario for selling your house this is another thing and it's my little pet peeve but it's psychological so <clears throat> when when you're talking about selling it's house not home it's house so wherever you see home you want to change it to house and the reason for that is because you want to get that person detached right because mm -hmm. people call home they're very attached and a lot of people can be very emotional about selling their house especially if it's not something they wanted to do like if they're being relocated you know and they really don't want to do that or you take an older couple that have raised their kids there and now they've got to downsize because the house has just gotten way too big for them and they can't manage it then you've got to get them detached and that can be difficult even for myself like two years ago my husband and i decided to sell our house and that was in july so i filled out the fmls form and everything and i had it in there and i hadn't pushed active on it yet and we put the sign in the yard and then i did post it on facebook and then an agent that i used to coach she called me karen called me and said oh my gosh i think i've got a seller for your i mean a buyer for your house can i come over there 
And I'm like, yeah, but you know it's not an FMLA yet. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm going to do a preview. So she comes over. She tells me and my husband, like, oh, I, I know my buyer is going to want to put an offer on it. So that night I'm just crying and crying, right? And then my husband starts crying. And then he's like, what do you want to do? I'm like, let's sleep on it. So Sunday morning we woke up and he goes, what do you want to do? And I said, I want to take a sign out of the yard. And he's like, I do too. So that was July. And then October, I had to sit with it, I know, as a realtor, terrible, 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 but we all have emotions, right? So it reminded me how other people feel, mm-hmm. you know? But so in October, I finally made the decision, we did, we were like, okay, let's do it. You know, it's, it's time, the market's really good right now, we've got a lot of good equity, let's do it. So we did and sold it in six hours. Wow. Yeah. So so just keep in mind that buying and selling is always an emotional thing. No matter how good it is, it's an emotional thing. Okay. So um, how can I make that happen for you? What's important to you? If we could add just one more thing to make this process even better, what would it be? Some of these questions may be a little too much. Okay. So it's also kind of knowing who you're talking to. Right? Whether you want to bombard them with questions or they're just the basic questions. We, went, we had a class with Chad uh, last month. Yeah. When you say that when you were talking today, like it was about listings mm-hmm. and the right questions to ask. And he was really emphatic in saying, you don't ask the why question. Yeah, you never ask why. Yeah, but that presentation has like three whys. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, you don't ever ask, um, yeah, why is that important? The word why, you'd say, what is important to you? What? You always answer, you always ask questions, what, not why. Because why puts people on the defensive. Like, you you know, remember, how many of you have kids? Like, older kids, okay. So, you're not there yet. You're not there yet. But But you'll say, you'll say, why did you do that? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I still do that. You don't understand. (laughs) So if you say what, then then that is more um, like a warm. Yeah, yeah. Okay, clear communication. Determine how you want to talk to somebody. Even if they say, right here it says in the frequency. All right, whether it's text, email, phone, what do you prefer and how often do you want me to communicate with you? I promise you, if they say every two weeks, do not believe that. You need to talk to your seller at least once a week. At least once a week. And I would highly recommend that you email, phone, and text. Do it all. Do it all. Because you never, the biggest complaint of a seller is that the agent put the sign in the yard and the lockbox on the door and I never heard from them again. That's the biggest complaint. Lack of communication. You did not keep them informed on, on the things that were going on. Okay. Yes, Chris. Just providing like a summary for the week even? Like yes, saying, that's a great here's, idea. Here's what we did for you this week. Yes. And then here's and the progress. Yeah, absolutely. Right. And then at the lockbox, you can print from the lockbox, you can print it like how many mm-hmm. people has come and like mm-hmm. Uh, yes, exactly. The house. Exactly. And so uh, what we used to do is we would download because all the, if the agent sends the feedback that you've requested, then it'll be in showing time, okay, and sometimes it'll be in your lockbox feed too as well. Uh, and then there's other things too because you're part of FMLS. There's circle picks that we're part of, so it'll give you a printout of how many times um, the house has been clicked on by the public and things like that. So what we used to do is we would make a summary and we would email that to our client every Friday without fail. Every Friday without fail. And so you can choose what day you want to do it on. You know, Monday is a good day for after the weekend showings if you wanted to do it on Monday. Do you also do, you know, like for instance, you have Hootsuite, which will give you uh, social media analytics? Yes, you you can do that. Mm -hmm. Totally, totally, totally. All right. Um, These are different stats right here as far as like the median sales price. This is for you. 
your days on market, your median sales price, and your list to sales price ratio. Well, you don't have these right, right now, so you can pull these off of our intranet from the market power. for where the yeah market stats and all that, and add those in there. Or you could leave that out if you wanted to. Right? Um, these are our credentials and awards, and then the local expert. This is the proof of all the things that you've done. You again, you can pull the Rawls Group stats to use here. Um, the industry leader, why is it good to go with Keller Williams? These are, this is a great thing to have when you, when you have it. Even if it's just a buyer you've worked with, okay, and not a listing. Always, always, always have a testimonials page. Like we would, actually with our buyers, we would give them a soul sign and take pictures of them in front of the, the house that they just closed on, mm -hmm. right? And it would say sold with the soul sign, and then they would write a testimonial, and then we had that on our website. We had that in our listing presentation, and it also got published on Zillow and Realtor.com. Everywhere that we could publish that, we published it. And it's a good thing to have different price points to show sellers too. Okay? So it doesn't have to be just a listing, it can be a buyer. As long as you have some testimonials on there okay this I love because this is the process initial meeting and walkthrough needs analysis sign a listing agreement prepare your property for sale launch com coming soon establish a competitive price um, which that actually is in the listing agreement so I don't yeah. know why it's way down there officially list your property launch just listed campaign Start showing your house, hold an open house, receive and present offers, begin re attorney review, negotiate contract, go under contract, facilitate inspection. Um, you're not going to facilitate the inspection. You will give them vendors, a list of vendors, and a list of inspectors for them to call. You do never call the inspection. You never call the contractor, you never call the painter, you never call the plumber, you never call the HVAC person, you never call the carpet. You give them a list of vendors and let them make the decision of who they want to use. Why is that important? Liability. Pardon me? Liability. Liability. Right, exactly. If you choose something for them and it goes awry, who are they going to blame? You. You. Right. And I would recommend at least two, if not three, different vendors for each category. So in my listing presentation and in my pre listing packet, I had a list of vendors that I had worked with. And I just, so they had that in case they needed to get in touch with those people. And they're always going to say, who do you like best? They're always going to say, you know, and I, my answer to that was, you know what? I like everyone, but what I suggest to you is that you call and you talk to the person and you work with the person that you feel like for that personality best matches your personality. Mm -hmm. That's the easiest way to answer that question. Okay. Um, then your customized marketing plan. Um, this goes into um, finding your buyer, that internet. It's actually about 90% now, so you really need, that was done in 2017, so you really need to get new stats for that, okay? Uh, and then, well, so well research pricing, captivated staging, eye catching yard signs, how, open house strategy. Do not put open house strategy on a house that you're not going to hold open. You don't always want to do an open house. It depends on the house. There are sellers that don't like open right either. right and what is the purpose in doing an open house anyways get Catch more direct attention yeah get yeah more business attract attention maybe even get more sellers in the subdivision okay um <clears throat> target targeted networking your listing amplified explains all that door knocking don't put door knocking on there if you're not going to go door knocking <clears throat> high quality professional photography if you're not going to hire a professional photographer, don't put that on there. But I promise you, if you are listing a property and you don't do professional photographs, you're doing yourself an injustice. Not only are you doing the seller an injustice, but you're doing yourself an injustice. 
Yes. Is there is there such thing as too much or too much professional photography? Yes. Okay. All Thank right. you for that question. Okay. Because there are times when you can see that a house has been virtually staged. Do you know what I mean by that? Yeah, I mean that it beautiful. is just so perfect mm -hmm. that, and I know that there are times when buyers will just flip by that because they know it's fake. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just be careful of who you're using to do those kinds of things. Yeah, because I ran into that problem um, showing a, a client a house, and we looked at the photos on Georgia MLS, mm -hmm. and the way they had it, I guess filtered or the way they the photographer cleaned up the photos mm -hmm. it made the house look beautiful like it was modern and like the floors and the cabinets and then when we got there we was like this is not this can't be the same house <laughs> like uh, the way they took the photos or when they took the pictures it made this room look huge you're like, I didn't know this wasn't an open concept. Yeah, yeah. Photoshop, genius. Photoshop, yeah. yeah. So it was one of those hard lessons, like, I don't know, drove over here and it's... Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's bad. Um, and you'll also, the more you do this, the easier it will be, you'll be able to spot, <clears throat> like, um, you know, the, the saying, a picture tells a thousand words, not always, because you'll see sometimes a house like is very you don't see a lot of the front yard that's typically because the driveway is either like this or it's like this <laughs> yeah okay or the first picture is like the inside of the house yes exactly inside it doesn't of the house. have good curb paper. that's correct um or you don't see any pictures of the backyard at all it's because there is no backyard it's a gully right or right. there's a retention pond right behind it or something and the backyard is so, like one of the biggest detractors from a house if it's like straight down right mm -hmm. I mean, it, oh yeah yeah, like yeah, yeah. Kind of with kids yeah especially with kids yeah uh, cutting edge digital marketing effective email marketing and mass mobile marketing okay the price is right your open house powerful bargaining chip uh, your custom marketing plan that just lists, lists out everything that you're going to do and when it's going to be done. Your trusted partner, a promise, and the bottom line, real estate is complicated. And that's where you come in. So that's online in my KW. Um, under, under list presentation, I believe. Actually, under education and listing presentation. Okay. All right, <clears throat> so then I wanted to, let's May I ask a question that's somewhat possibly off topic? Yes. Okay. Speaking of real estate being a people business, mm -hmm. let's say that you were looking at needing a number, phone number, for an owner on the tax records of a plot of land that's adjacent to something that you have a listing on. How would one go about finding said number if there is no actual number uh, listed on any prior listings or listed at the tax assessor's office? Um, <clears throat> well, there's several different companies that you have to pay for. Um, and one of them is Red X, R-E-D-X.com. The other one is Land Voice. Land? Land, land .com. Okay. Um, sometimes you can get lucky and go to the white pages on kw.com. Yeah, not very often. Um, and then there's also the Haynes directory. And I think that's H-A-I-N-E 
CPS, Kings Directory. But those are all services that you have to pay for to get people's phone numbers. Okay. Have you ever heard of something called PIPL? No, I haven't. Someone sent it to me off the uh, Atlanta real estate thing. Uh-huh. And I, I've not used it. That's why I asked the question. No, I don't know that one. Hmm. Okay, I cannot find this. Okay, we're not going to worry about watching it. Um, all right, listing appointments. Re walk through the home, listing presentation. Would it be more of a benefit to do the listing presentation and show them the price before showing them your marketing? No. No. Yeah. So you want to go over the marketing and what you're going to do to get the house sold before you go over price. That shows like value that you're bringing to the mm -hmm. table before you hit them with the price that they really know so they can believe you when you say this is the price. When Correct. You yeah. Bully you. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Right. Yes. Yeah. Every time somebody's going to be like, oh, it's their own house that the grandfather built the floors. So mm -hmm. It needs to be $50,000. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And, you know, um, I know one thing that um, you had mentioned, Gerard, about an appraisal. Mm -hmm. My advice is the only time to ask your seller to get an appraisal is if it's a specialty property. Uh, okay, the reason for that, typically a private appraisal are, is usually more than what the bank is going to appraise the property at gotcha. or the lender is going to appraise the property at. So uh, if there, and what I mean by specialty property, um, if there is no way that you can find comps to, uh, you know, come up with like within a mile radius mm -hmm. of the house that you're going to go list, then that would be a time when you probably want to get an appraisal done. Or, and that's very rare mm -hmm. that you can't pull comps, mm -hmm. you know, <clears throat> within a year. Um, but there are times, like for instance, I listed an eight acre farm once and there was no properties around there that you know were comparable. So we got a private appraisal for that. If it's um, you know a house that's um, a million million plus, that might be a good property to get a private appraisal on. Um, sometimes you'll find, especially in the downtown kind of area, like in, you know, around Decatur, Virginia Highlands, Grant Park, you can have a house that's 300000 you know, and a house that's a million, and then another house that's 700000 you know, so sometimes you might need to do that. Um, but it, it will, you'll, you'll know, you'll, you'll, the more you do this, the easier it'll become so that you know what needs an appraisal and doesn't. But if you if it's a your typical cookie cutter subdivision, you're gonna be able to find comps and your seller is just spending four hundred and twenty five dollars for no reason. Right. Yeah. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So walking through the home, uh, it has an example of a check of a checklist, but this is not really what I'm talking about, the FMLS printout sheet. I should have brought one in here. I didn't think about that, but but it's in there. All right. Um. Okay. Is everybody ready to take a break? Sure. Okay. Let's talk about this um, listening presentation real quick. Uh, create a great impression. Duh. I think we all know that, right? <laughs> okay. Share your price recommendation at the end, near the end, and set the expectations on how you're going to market. I would also recommend to you that you set the expectations on the hours that you work. What do I mean by that? <laughs> <laughs> you will receive a text, so 11 at 9. Yes, right, exactly. 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 So, you know, um, that was always something that I added in my pre-listing packet. These are the hours. 
that were available, right? Of course, if there is, if you're in the middle of negotiating, you know, then there's going to be times when you're going to work outside of that because you're on a time frame. For, for most of the time, if you let someone know up front what your hours are and what they can expect from you, then they respect that. But if you don't, then I'm telling you, people will text you at midnight wanting an answer. And if you start off that relationship like that in the beginning and then you cut it off, they're going to get upset and mad because now they're thinking you're not responding and you're ignoring them. So it's better to set everything up front. Yes, sir. Good grief. What's the expectation in the industry with that? Because when we were previewing homes, we talked to a bunch of different real estate agents. And one of the gentlemen who'd been doing this for 20 years was like, you know, on my hours or my client's hours. And it, it, do you run up against that a lot in the industry? Or are people generally pretty pragmatic with their office hours and mm -hmm. setting that up front? It's different for everybody. Mm -hmm. I, I really stick to it. I never worked on Sundays. You know, Sundays mm -hmm. was my family day. And when somebody asked me, you know, if I um, could do it on Sunday, I'd say, no, I have another appointment. And I oh, did. I did because my <laughs> yeah, family important. was my appointment. Yeah. You know, so um, and then I always told people that my phone. And I'm telling y'all, y'all can get a hold of me most any time. But my phone goes to silent from 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. Yeah. So I'm. I was just very thorough about it because I value my family time more so than my work time just to be honest. So that's kind of hard to do when you're new. Mm -hmm. You know, it really is. Um, so you'll just have to judge that for yourself. But I will tell you this, if you don't plan to take at least one day a week off, you know, somewhere, you're gonna get burned out real fast. Mm -hmm. So just, and whatever day you plan to take off, just make sure that you stick to it. Because one thing that you've got to get really good about in this business is erasing and replacing. And what I mean by that is you've got a calendar and you've got your things in there that you need to do. Well, if something pops up to take place of something, then whatever you had in that, in that spot, you need to erase it but replace it. Okay? So sometimes it might need, need to be moved around. But getting organized and sticking to a schedule for yourself will make your life a lot easier in this business. Yeah, the, when I, I spoke with one agent this weekend, he said the most important thing I do is I have a calendar and I stick to the times that I'm, because it, even agents who have been around and make tons of money will every once in a while miss like uh, the due diligence period or miss important mm -hmm. dates. Um, and that's your re reputation is only as good as absolutely absolutely that, that was he's like marketing all that stuff the most important thing is you're you're on time and you're exactly following your calendar yeah exactly and so what I do and what we talk about in coaching is color coding your calendar so I had <clears throat> in my calendar green is money making opportunity which means I'm working with a, you know I'm going on a listing appointment I'm going on a buyer appointment, which I don't do any more of that at all. Or, and then, um, or I am lead generating, which I don't do any of that anymore either. So anything that is in green is a money-making activity. Anything that in red for me was an administrative thing, and red always fell to the end of the day. So, and then I, blue for me is vacation time. Cause I like the ocean and it's blue. <laughs> uh, yellow for me is if I'm teaching a class or I'm attending a class. So, and then you can choose your colors. And then for me on my phone, my calendar is on my phone too. So, and I can, you know, look at it real fast and it's color coded just like my Google calendar on my laptop. So, you know, I'm sure you know that mm -hmm. it's coordinated, but a lot of people don't have their calendars synced up to their phone. Yeah. yeah, which makes life a whole lot easier. It does. Yeah, and then you can look at that real quick at a glance and go, okay, this is what I'm doing today. When I was an IT director, all my color code was red, which meant it sucks. <laughs> 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 okay, we're going to.
gonna do a guide to selling your home. Break. Let's take a real Keep quick break, up. and um, we'll be back here shortly. What about you? You gonna go stretch your legs or you're gonna hang out? I'm gonna hang out right here. Alright, girl. Well, I'm gonna probably go and make some phone calls. Got a couple of bottles in here. I want to see who's calling me. She is so right about ex um, Sorry, just texting a kid who's at the mall across the street to make sure. But she's cool. So, mm -hmm. conversation we're having. So yeah. tomorrow I gotta go on. Um, let the guy into that <laughs> perfect property, the investment property, so he can let in uh, another contractor. And he was like, if he gives me a good number, then we're going to go ahead and go to the property tomorrow. Okay. So I think my conversation kind of, my text conversation kind of helped with my. Yeah, it is what it is. It is what it is. Like, I don't know what else you're looking for. You know? Right. Sometimes you just have to bottom line people into doing what they need to do. Yeah. 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 And it don't, it don't okay. I pray that it does. I pray that it does. Yes. Please. I pray that it does every day as well. <laughs> Tell me about it. Mm -hmm. My whole goal, I mean, mm -hmm. everybody has their own plot. Mine is simple. All I want to do is make money in real estate. Mm -hmm. So I can contribute that money back. I contribute usually about fifty to sixty percent of the money that I make to our five hundred one c three nonprofit, which gives kids that have been injured and abused and not mistreated mm -hmm. horribly um, the opportunity to feel good about themselves through um, working with horses and animals and it really makes a difference. So I think too that's my big deal. Yeah, I was uh, looking into that too as far as like um, inner city kids, um, especially young boys, uh, who don't have any guidance and Yeah, mentorship's amazing for them. Yeah, yeah, because the they people, need it. They, yeah, they need it. And the guys around them are that's older not telling them any good advice. It's, it's like they're encouraging them to do dumb Bad things. Yeah, dumb yeah. stuff that they're doing.
quiet in here. Y'all on break? Yeah. yeah. So, how's it going? Going All right. great. Good. Good, good, good. Did I run out of um, handouts? Did you get one of these um, session four handouts? If not, then that means I ran out. Which one? It would look like this quick book. You know what? I, I didn't get that one. I didn't get that one. That's because they're all here. Gerard took the whole. <laughs> but my bad. I should have taken to off the paper clip. I was trying to, uh, I was going to be the helper and pass them out to Oh, you. that's what it was. That's what it was. That's what it was. Thank you, Doe. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. I thought I did. All right. There you go. So I think it's I just, just a front and back. Oh. <laughs> yep. I was going to be the helper with that. I love it. Okay. Um, this has nothing to do with listings, but it gives all the Keller Williams, you know, I want to look at that. Um, what Keller Williams is all about and you know big picture 30,000 feet and um, so that acronym up at the top we lovingly call Y4C2Ts I don't know who made that up but these um, beliefs win-win or no deal integrity do the right thing customers always come first commitment in all things communication seek first to understand creativity ideas before results um, teamwork together everyone achieves more trust starts with honesty and success results through people so these are the kind of agents we want you to be um, and you may have read, uh, read this in the, um, the Ignite book um, that our mission is to, to build careers worth having, businesses worth owning, lives worth living, experiences worth giving, and legacies worth leaving. So, and then, so anyway, um, we're in the, Diane and I are in the process of modifying our agent orientation and y'all happen to be coming in right as we're in the middle of it. We used to have you sit down with her for about an hour and 15 minutes and then unload tons of information and we're figuring out how to parse it out in a series of 30-day uh, welcome emails. But one of the things she goes over is are these items and I didn't want all the mess. This is who we are. So I hope it resonates with all of you. Uh, Carolina put one there. And thank you. Where is that old cheaper? Uh, Terry. Holy. Well, I wanted to tell y'all that you have a another visitor. You know how Tony Choich came on the first day. Um, who came on Thursday? Yes. Uh, it was Ryan. Ryan Forward. Yes. And Dominique Garrett is coming. Um, I think she's going to come in at the quarter of. Did Terry say 15 minutes break? Or she said, yeah, she said, she said hey, let's take a break. Quick break. So. That, that was, okay, it's usually 15 minutes. 
so anyway, but I haven't told Terry that Dominic's coming, so. Um, well, it is set at, I mean, I can try. It's not, it ain't gonna be that much warmer. What time is this Warmer. Jumping jacks, I recommend jumping jacks. Thank you, so are you. Okay, thank you. So you're gonna have a visitor. Oh, uh, cool. Dominique Garrick is gonna come in at 11.45 because I thought that would be the end of your break, but I can try to get her. Just talk about her experience as a new agent. Okay, good, good, good. So, yeah, all going okay? Good, as far as I know. So far, so good. So far, freezing. I just handed out to them um, this sheet because I don't think they we're revamping our orientation. Mm -hmm. so. Oh, good. Okay. Awesome. Thank you, ma'am. All right, then, then two. Okay, good. You signed in. There we go. And did you get yes. one of these? Okay. Perfect. I thought one more gal was going to help. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hello, how many folks do you know? Hello. Coach? She knows. Oh. Invite her down. Hello, Miss Dominique. Come Hello. on in. Hello. One of my famous students right here. I'm not famous. You are famous. <laughs> in my book. This is Dominique. And how long have you been an agent now? Um, August will make two years. Two years. Congratulations. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So so, um, yeah, been doing this for almost two years now. Um, when I first started, um, I was just doing it part time. I was working another job in marketing, and um, well, that job I was working for the auto show, so I was traveling around the country and trying to, you know, study and work on my brand, um, you know, while I was in town or while I was gone. But that didn't quite work out for me too well. Um, I wasn't able to focus as much on my business as I wanted to. So in November of last year, I actually just went for it, went full time with my business, and I actually love it. I haven't regretted a thing, and I don't look back on you know that decision. So um, I know Stacy wanted me to come in here and just talk to you guys. Is everyone brand new with real estate? Yes. Mm -hmm. Completely brand new. Okay. Well, perfect. Well, what are some like concerns or questions that you guys may have for me? You know, seeing as I was in your position not too long ago. What do you get most of your leads for? Are you using Zillow or are you using uh, web-based SEO? So, um, when I first got started, I was more so focused on social media. I always had a strong social media presence. <laughs> so, um, when I started focusing on my branding and doing social media, I started getting like a lot of referrals from my friends and family. So, um, that's the main way that I started with my business. But since then, um, since I got started, I also started doing open houses, which is a really great way to pick up buyers and sellers. And um, also, I've started doing like cold calling, like for sale by owners and expired. Do you use um, Mojo or do you just yeah. call expired listings? Or? Yeah, so I use Mojo, but you could also look on like uh, Zillow and you can get for sale by owners um, numbers, you know, for free on there. So that's a great idea if you're just getting started too. But um, open houses, though, that's probably, it's definitely a free way and a quick way to start getting some good leads. So you stop, like, you went to the open house, you didn't make an open house. Or, yeah, or I hosted the open oh, house. Oh, you hosted Yep. So usually um, I'll do it either Saturday or Sunday from, I usually do two to four. But um, you could also do them, like, say, for example, it's a home that's near a really good school, like within walking distance to a really good school. You could probably do like maybe Tuesday or Wednesday evening open house or like when school is getting out to attract, you know, those people picking up their kids. So, Or you can yeah. do maybe even a twilight open house. I've heard a couple of Do you of advertise it near the school or how do you get the traffic from the school to, to go to the open house? Where you so, well, usually I'll go put out um, balloons and open house signs like two days before the open house then I usually promote online um, through Facebook through my personal page my business page um, it's also a good idea to look into some of the um, like some neighborhoods have 
Like I know East Atlanta has like an East Atlanta homeowners page or something like that. But um, yeah, just look at different groups in the neighborhoods that you want to work and start like just putting in there like, hey, open house from whatever to whatever. That works out pretty good. So you just contact the listing agents of a house that you're interested in and say, hi, Dominique, I'd like to do an open house for you. Yep, pretty much. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, there are always, I mean, one way you could just look and see, like Brad sends out every Friday, he sends out an email with um, all the people who got new listings for the week. So you could just look right on there and reach out to some of those people. If you, you know, if they have a house in an area that you want to work, then you could do those open houses. Um, also, there's a Facebook group. I can't remember exactly what it's called. It's like open house tips and something. Mm -hmm. um, but that's another good way to find some open houses. Do you do your own website in addition to AW and get that SEO'd and uh, push people to that? Or do you push yeah. people to your KW? I started out using my KW website, but um, so I'm very heavy and uh, I really like marketing and stuff like that and branding. So I took it an extra step to build another website right. on top of that. But I mean, when you're just getting started, the KW website's great. Um, when I use that, when I got a lot of compliments on it also, it's just my personal preference. I just want my stuff to be, you know, different from everybody else's fun. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely push into the KW site. Get your value proposition out there. Mm -hmm. And then you could also get like your own domain name. Like mine is uh, DominiqueGarrick.com. You can get your own domain name and link it to the uh, like Placer website. Absolutely. Yeah. I think I saw your website. I think you create, I think you like kind of like data spatial, like a, like a photograph you Photoshop something and put your face in there. Yeah, yeah use, I changed mine up quite a bit, but it won't quite be that uh, I, I love that one though. I think you. it was really, really, really do you Using meaningful. a CMS, do you use uh, WordPress or do you use uh, Squarespace? Or so, I know WordPress is usually the best for search engines and optimization. What I actually use, it's a company called um, Web for Realty. Okay. So it's basically like Wix. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Wix, like building mm -hmm. your own site on there, but it's for realtors. So that's what I use. Um, and it allows you to upload pictures, you can change your background. And it's got the IDX capability of pulling it. Yeah, and it already has like the, I, or the, um, what is it? Yeah, the IDX thing mm -hmm. already mixed up in there. So you can just go in and customize, add your color, add your logo, and go. And they're pretty good at SEO, uh, or I should say SEO capability. So they have, you can hire someone um, through their company mm -hmm. to like, connect your website and do all that SEO and stuff if you're not, you know, good with that. But I personally, I just did it on my own because you could also get in there and put in your own. Oh, sure. You can put metadata and then the link to sites and stuff. I just know certain CMSs are better for uh, SEO than others. So that yeah. Good. I'm still kind of new with that stuff. I'm still trying to figure it out. But but there's also people with that um, company that you can, you know, always reach out to and they'll help you build your website as well. Awesome. So, cool. So cool. Any other questions? No. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Well, um, yeah. Again, my name is Dominique. So if you guys see me on the office, um, you know. You have, an office. you have an office here, right? Yeah. I'm just right down there. I think I'm like the third, third or fourth floor down on the left. So. So free What's so important about having an office in the office? Um, well, it helps me out um, just to focus and, you know, get productive because I get distracted very easily in a lot of environments. So having my own little office space, I just close the door and just zone out. So, yeah. And then it's good. I mean, just coming into the office, you're always going to be running into the other agents. So I mean, that's always good, too. Yeah. Do you have a lot of, one last question, yes. sorry. Do you have a lot of leads and business coming in to going full time? Um, or was it just kind of a, because you said you just recently went full time. Yeah. Do you think, think it gave you a good kind of slingshot into going full time by having that side business and building it up over two years? Or do you yeah. think you could have done and the also, same? I also took bold. Um, yeah, actually like three or four months right before I decided to go full time. But, um, I mean, I think it did help all the work that I put in before I decided to go full time, but definitely with me, you know, not having that cushion and that other job behind me definitely made me like, you know, I have to get out here and get it. Mm -hmm. I have to make those calls. I gotta, you know, do whatever I can to make sure I last. All right. Mm -hmm. So I heard you say that um, when you first started out, you, um, like you said, you had a huge or strong social media presence. 
Um, how many leads are, I guess this is a twofold question, how many leads did you generate from that and what type of leads did you generate from, let's say, Instagram and Facebook um, and what type of price points did you? So I don't do the best job at always um, tracking my numbers, but it seemed like for each like post I would make on my page, it seemed like I would get at least one lead from that. Um, most of the time I find social media has more so um, buyer leads, mm -hmm. but I have, I actually did get a buyer through my Instagram um, and then he did end up selling about, I don't know, not too long after that, like within like six months. So, I mean, if you just go out there, start putting your name out there, start putting out valuable content is the key thing. Um, yeah. You can't just be out there. Like I see a lot of agents, they just post just new houses just all the time. And I mean, that's cool, but you still want to make sure that you add some value, give out tips or just, you know, whatever. Gotcha. You just got to make, make yourself sure. known. Yeah, make, make people sure. want to follow you and, yeah. you know, interact with you basically gotcha. is the key gotcha. thing. Yeah. Good. Good to know. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Alrighty, guys. Thank you. So, nice so talking to you all. <laughs> Have a good one. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. So now we're on page um, 28. A guide to selling your home. So here are some things. It suggests here to confirm the appointment. Um, for me, I never confirmed my appointments. After I made the appointment, I never reached back out and called to double check and make sure that they were still meeting with me. Um, the reason that I chose not to do that is I didn't want to give someone the excuse to, tell, to, to change the appointment, right? <clears throat> um, so when you, not, when you get to someone's house and you knock on the door, and you're face to face with them, it's a whole lot harder for them to say, oh, I can't see you, then just go ahead and invite you in, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So that was my choice though. So you can choose to whether you want to confirm it or not. And actually, true story, um, had an appointment, uh, met a couple, they came to one of my listings and uh, they were not working with an agent. And um, so they needed to sell their house before being able to buy. So made an appointment to list their house. I know it was on the Saturday morning at 10 o'clock. Got there Saturday morning at 10 o'clock and they were like, oh, we kind of forgot that you guys were coming over. Plus, we don't think that we're gonna be able to get enough money out of, that, out of the house anyways. And I said, well, I think you'll be surprised based on the tax records of you know what you owe and what we can put the house on the market. I think it would be worth your time to go ahead and let's take a look at this. And they're like, okay, fine. And, you know, put their house on the market, got a contract, multiple contracts on it, actually within seven days. And, you know, so we sold that and then they bought another one from me. So that was, you know, another reason why. Mm -hmm. you just gotta, sometimes you gotta think kind of fast on your feet. Yeah. You know, when you're gonna set. Yeah. But people sometimes can be very pleasantly surprised at what they're gonna get for their house versus. It's a different market these days, so each house kind of stands on its own in a lot of ways now, right? Um, show up on time or a little early. Have a copy of the listing presenta uh, presentation for the seller with no script notes on there. Have business cards to present with a copy of the listing presentation. Know the comps for the home. That's the most important thing, honestly is knowing those yeah. comps and knowing why the price that you've said is the price that you've said. And that's key. Yes. And helping them understand. You know, it's very rare though, honestly, that you're gonna have somebody argue with you too much on price. Especially if you know. If you know that market, you know you know, and you've studied those comps, then you can prove it. Mm -hmm. You know, you can prove it with the pictures and the other things that have gone on there. And then you also have the ability, I mean, you have the advantage of being able to say, you know, <clears throat> we, you have to think about appraisal. We can list it, any, at, you can list it at any price you want to list it at, mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean it's going to appraise, right? Mm -hmm. So people don't think about that when they're, you know, and you'll find agents that take overpriced listings. 
Well, you know, and then the next thing that you see is two weeks later, there's a price decrease. Two weeks later, there's another price decrease. Two weeks later, there's another price decrease. Mm -hmm. You know, and then there's also times when um, you get an offer and maybe you're in a multiple offer situation and the seller decides to take the highest and best. Well, just because that happens doesn't mean that's what he's going to net because it may not appraise. Mm -hmm. And so you always have to point that out to them as well. Okay. Um, let's see. Um, this is just kind of stuff I think everybody really should know. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to get your home sold, house sold. Um, did you have a chance to review the guide to selling your house that I left with you? Um, great, did you complete the questionnaire? Oh, one thing about the pre-listing packet too that you want to do, you want to make sure that you have the seller's disclosure, like Maria said, attached to it, the community association disclosure attached to it, mm -hmm. the importance of why hiring a realtor, that's in this, this the consumer disclosures, have that, and then probably uh, ABC on agency, the ABC of agency too, in the pre-listing packet. It's really cool when you walk in the house and you see the packet laying on the kitchen table and you see that they've already filled out the seller's disclosures and the homeowner's association disclosures. Now you know that you've got the listing. Yeah. It's just a matter of can we agree on price, right? Um, okay, let's see. Just going, this says the goals for today, discuss the motivation for selling. Hopefully you already know that because you asked that question in the pre-listing packet, I mean, in your pre-qualification questions, right? Define your 10 plus experience expectations. Um, they may not know what their experience is. And, you know, they may, this might be the first time they're ever selling a house. So if they're selling a house, how are they gonna know what to expect? I mean, if it's their first time. Just by what people have told them to expect, which isn't always the best the thing. Best Right. Right. Okay. View, review what you can expect with them. Right. Explain the selling process from listing to closing. Review the three factors that get your house sold and decide to work together. Remember, you you have a decision. You don't have to work with anybody. I mean, I I have fired sellers before. Yeah. If you ever find yourself in that position, what is mm -hmm. the process? Uh, the last seller that I, that I fired was, um, it was, you know, when we listed the property, <clears throat> we had told her at that point that the house would not qualify for an FHA or VA loan, that it was only going to be qualified for a conventional loan because of the condition that the house was in. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that uh, we would probably have a lot of investors interested in the house, okay? Right. And that, um, you know, what we thought the house would sell for. And so we put the house on the market, and within a couple of days, we had several investors wanting to purchase the house. Um, and she just kept refusing the offers, or, and they were good offers. It wasn't like they weren't, you know. And so I just called her up and said, hey, Colleen and Terry and Justin, just wanted to let you know that um, we think it's probably best since the house will not qualify for FHA and VA. Um, and the fact that, you, that we're getting offers from investors and it doesn't seem like it's something that you want to accept and go with, we think it's probably best that we go ahead and let go of the listing. And maybe it would be better for you to go ahead and list it for sale by owner. And she's like, oh, okay. You know, but we, at that time, we were spinning our wheels. If we're getting offers coming in that are decent offers and they're not accepting, then that's just silly for us to spin our wheels. Gotcha. You know? gotcha. So that, that was up to us, though. Again, you're running your own business. So those are things that you get to decide for yourself. I'm just telling you what I do. Now, would you say that putting, let's say that you have a lot of listings, <coughs> would you put those listings out? Uh, to boost the attraction and attention to the listings 
How would you do that? Would you do that via social media or would you do what, that via listings? your website? Yes. Okay. My listings go on website. They go on Zillow, Redfin, Zillow.com. You know, over 300 websites is what the listings go to. I advertise it on Roku TV, Kiboom, um, also Apple TV and Android TV. Um, it has its own website. The house has its own website. Um, has its own virtual tour that so and then I also have a text writer so if they text a number to the, the sign that's been associated with a sign to the house that I'm listing if somebody is riding by that house and they text that number then the virtual tour of the house will come up on their phone mm -hmm. and then um, and then it gives them all the information. And then at the same time that that virtual tour comes up on their phone, it texts me and emails me that person's phone number so that I can call that person and say, hey, I see that you're on front of my listing at 123 Main Street, you know, what can I help you with? Okay, so Roku TV and which other? Apple TV and Keyboom and Android. And then all my listings have their own dedicated website. Okay. And their own dedicated virtual tour on YouTube. And then all the social media posts, so it's advertised on Craigslist without the address. I do not put the address in Craigslist. But it goes on um, Pinterest, Facebook, Google Plus, LinkedIn, Twitter, and I think that's it. And do you have somebody to do that for you? Yes. Or, is, or is it like a company that you hired and they, they, they do all that content for you and, yes. and blast it out everywhere? Yes. Gotcha. Yes, yes, yes. Gotcha. Yes, Chris. Um, do you have a uh, cost threshold for virtual mm -hmm. tours with your sellers? Meaning like if they're you're selling a $150,000 home, are you paying for a virtual tour or is it again like the four hundred dollar threshold you're talking about? That's a great question. I pay twelve dollars a year for that system I just told you about. How much? This whole thing? Twelve dollars a year. Twelve dollars a year. For okay, that so whole what's system. the secret sauce, Terry? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what is the name of the game? What's the name of that? Um, come crazy. and talk to me after this. Okay. Okay, okay you guys. Right. Um, so, and I'll I'll explain. Okay. okay. And I'll also be happy to share it with you via email. And it Perfect. Will be. Okay. Um, okay, uncover the seller's needs. Hopefully you've done that already, again, with those pre-qualification questions. Right. You know, the whole reason for me to do that pre-listing packet and get all the questions out of the way is because I don't want to spend two hours at their house, mm -hmm. right? I want to get in there, <laughs> get the listing paperwork, and get out. Right? Okay. Oh my gosh. So yeah. because if you don't, then you can spend literally hours with someone. You know, they really you no know, and I only have this much patience as it is. Okay. Um so listen more than you talk. You know, this is a really other good thing to learn is um Learning people's personality styles. I know that we've talked some about this, like when I've gone over your disc profile with you. Um, and so when you learn somebody else's personality styles, it's really easy to mirror and match them when you're talking to them. So when you, in this, you know, add a sellers and they ask you for, if you'd like a glass of water, if they have a glass of water, say yes, right? If they take a sip of water, you take a sip of water. Learning to mirror and match their personality style is key. Okay, so the more you learn about that, the better off you'll be, right? Because if you came to my house, right, with a listing presentation of all, you know the where the Chuck Carr stats are? You know what I'm talking about, Chuck, Chuck Carr stats? No. Okay, chart masters, do you know what I'm talking about when I say chart, chart masters? Okay, so, we do the the chart masters are in our kw intranet and then they're they're right now for you to look at but then we also every they come out every quarter and so at our sales meeting when they come out brad goes over those stats okay so there's some things in there that are really good for listing presentations but if you came to my house 
and you had all these facts and numbers and all this data and you sat down and you started doing that with me in five minutes I'd be totally glazed over bored to death of what you were telling me and I'd be like you gotta leave mm -hmm. you know because I'm not that kind of personality style now there's other people that love facts and figures and that's what's going to win them over knowing the difference between those is important okay and you can usually start telling what kind of person they are on the phone by all that's the questions you ask, ask. You. yeah yeah by all the questions you ask them on the phone you can start telling what kind of personality style they are so here's a couple other things personality styles so when you're talking to someone and they say to you oh I hear what you say you're saying you know or uh, I didn't understand I didn't understand you or I didn't hear what you said when they're using that that means that they're very auditory so they really learn by by auditory right um, if they start saying oh I feel you oh I feel what you're saying okay that means they're a touchy-feely person so the more you can tap into their emotions and be touchy-feely with them the better off you're gonna be um, if you if someone saying oh I see that oh I don't see that you know I can't visualize that that means they're a very visual person so they like to see everything right okay so those are just like little things that can help all right um again why are you moving do you need to sell within a certain time frame why would that be an important question to ask someone maybe someone needs to move like relocated next to yeah yeah timeline. pardon me oh i was just gonna say timeline yeah associated with what she's saying is yeah you know, so, 30 60 90 days out yeah absolutely so sometimes um Let's say that someone is building the house and their house is not going to be ready for 90 days. And someone's concerned about going ahead and put their house on the market because what if they go ahead and get an offer? Well, there's always a workaround. Always stay in solution mode because hopefully you get an offer and you can explain to the, list, the, the buyer's agent, look, thank you so much for the offer, but the closing date is not going to work. My clients cannot be out of the house for another 90 days. So is there any way that we could go ahead and close on the property and then my clients rent back for the next 60 days, you know, so you can stay in that solution mode. There's always a solution. Um, sometimes people don't want to list their house until they find a place to buy, right? Especially in, in today's market. Although supply is going up, we're still at somewhat at a seller's market. But um, when, when supply goes up, then it becomes more of a buyer's market. So we're not there, but I do think within the next year, we're going to be at a neutral market. And what I mean by that is it's not going to be a buyer's market, it's not going to be a seller's market. So when that happens, we're in com we're, there's a lot more competition. And so you've got to be at six months supply. Right now we're at four months supply. So it has gone up. For the last several years, we've been less than three months supply this time of the year. But now we're at four months. So when we get to six months supply, it's a neutral market. Yes, did you have a question, Maria? Yeah, I didn't understand. Okay. That part. okay. Um, which part did you not understand? Supply? Supply. Okay. When there's a lot of houses on, on the, the market, market, that's yeah. what I mean by supply. Okay. Yeah. So when you talk about four months of supplies, a house for four months in the market. There's enough houses on the market right now that would, if if a house sold every day, for the next four months, we would not, we would run out of a house to buy in four months. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's what I mean by supply. Okay. And um, say when you get to six months, what happens? It becomes a neutral market. Okay. And it's no longer a buyer's market or a seller's market. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there's a lot more competition, and you know, um, price is really what's going to be driven the majority of the time. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but if you get a seller that w doesn't want to list their house until they find something to buy, do you see a problem with that? Yes. yes. Okay, what is the problem? Um, I guess 
Maybe, I mean, I'm new, but I'm just going to go out on a limb. Okay. Uh, the problem that I see is once you see a property that you want to buy, we still have to sell your home. And you're banking on the funds from the sale of your home to buy that new property. Um, that new property may not be available when you want to buy or when your house sells. That's very good. So the first thing that you would ask the seller that says, well, we don't want to list the house until we find a place to buy. The next question is, do you qualify to buy without selling your house? Mm -hmm. Okay. If they say, well, no, then you need to explain to them that in today's market, the majority of people are not going to accept a contingency mm -hmm. upon sale of their house. People will accept a contingency upon close of your house, meaning that we've already got a contract on your house mm -hmm. and the contract on your house looks solid. So that's actually at the time when we list the house, then we go out and we start looking, right? Not beforehand. Some people will insist otherwise. Um, for me, that would be a waste of my time, but I'll leave that up to you, whether you would wanna do that or not. Okay, make sense? Gotcha. Okay. Um, do you have a price in mind that you think your house will sell for? Should have already asked that in your pre-listing questions, right? Okay, so what happens if they're really, really, have huge, yeah, unrealistic expectations. Yeah, that's exactly the phrase I was looking for. Unrealistic uh, expectations. What happens? How do you? We have to bring them back down to reality. Yeah, yeah, you know. yeah. Okay, what if you don't get them in reality? Then, I mean, I guess the possibility is the way you had the verbiage when you fired the uh, the seller. You kind of have to let them down, let them know because you're gonna be wasting your time and theirs because mm -hmm. nobody's not gonna even look at that property or try to offer them something at that price of this way over price. Correct. It's just gonna be Correct. a waste of time. Would you recommend for them to get an appraisal? Um, I you could say that. You could say, you know, um, why don't you, you, can you know, like, why I don't you go ahead and the comparables, but if you so not feeling comfortable, you can get an appraisal. Yeah. And we can talk up to that. Yeah. You could, you could recommend that. Yes, Chris. You think, like, we have a established relationship with a renovation company. Mm hmm And um, would that be a good pivot to say, well, you know, I think this house could get that amount if we fix this, this, and this, and I have a relationship mm -hmm. to where we could go in and get those areas renovated and then get that price that you want if you can be patient. Otherwise, you're going to be putting it out on the market for three months, which is going to cost you probably $9,000 a month with your price, and then we'll be back in the same place we were before. Yeah, you could totally do that. Yeah, if you feel like the renovations, as long as it's not going to put them over what the cost, cost. That, right, right, the right. Yeah, I mean, like you said, some people are like, well, I'd like $500,000, and you're like, I like a beach vacation in the Hamptons for free. <laughs> It's not going to happen. So, yeah, you, you have to cut bait sometimes. But yeah, yeah. Definitely. If they're close enough to where the, you know, the cost of the renovations, mm -hmm. and you know how much the cost of the renovations are, uh, this is kind of an angle that we've been playing with uh, on a bunch of different fronts since we yeah. had a relationship. Yeah, so knowing those costs will be very beneficial to you. Right. Yeah. So, um, how the listing, um, really sad situation. The lady, much older lady, and um, sweet as she could be, and she had a bunch of acreage up in Canton, um, about six acres, well not a bunch, but about six acres. Her daughter had three of the acres, and she died. Mm. And then her son had the other three acres, and he built this beautiful, beautiful house on it. He died. Oh no. The house had been sitting there, I know, it was heartbreaking. Um, the house had been sitting there for two years because she had just gotten to the emotional uh, part to where she could let go of it. So Justin and I, when I say Justin, that was my son and him and I were partners. So Justin and I went up there to view the house and um, she couldn't, she was on an oxygen tank and just, you know, not really in the best of health. So we went up there and the house was a mess. I mean, a raccoon had been living in it. I mean, it was just a, a mess. It was a wreck. 
and beautiful furniture that because it had been sitting there, mm -hmm. you know, mold had even grown, grown on a lot of the furniture. I mean, just terrible. Oh, and good. so no, there was gonna, there needed to be about $60,000 worth of renovations done by house. Mm -hmm. Well, I knew that she was not up for, and the house needed cleaning. I mean, clean, like unbelievable amounts of cleaning. And so we knew that she was not going to be up for the sixty thousand to seventy thousand dollars worth of renovation. She wasn't even going to be up to cleaning the property. So um, <clears throat> we, you know, went and saw her again and said, "What we've come up with is the house needs about sixty to seventy thousand dollars worth of renovations. If you do this, this is the price that the house could possibly sell for. However, it's going to take time to get this stuff done." The first thing that has to be done, there has to be an estate sale, you know, and the estate sale needs to come in and get everything out. Then the house is going to have to be cleaned up. Then you're going to have to do the renovations. So we're probably looking at three or four months out plus the money, you know, and there's no guarantee that you're really going to get it back out. So she chose to sell the property as is. So you're going to have that sometimes. It's just knowing your numbers, right? Okay. Um, De delivering a 10 plus experience what does that look to you like to you N not w don't worry about what it looks like to the seller but what does that look like to you that you can deliver you be willing to go the extra mile what's that mean though mm. I don't know. to me it kind of means like a concierge service more so than like there's more customer service involved mm -hmm. than a business relationship and that's my challenge mm -hmm. in this because I'm coming from commercial mm -hmm. and banking mm -hmm. and that's all business mm -hmm. relationships it's mm -hmm. not personal when somebody's trying to sell their home it does not matter to, I mean granted I've only got two listings that are residential thus far but God bless when those folks call me and they want me to sell their house it's not a business thing it's an emotional thing, mm -hmm. and that okay. is freaky. Mm -hmm. So the only thing I could come up with is just add customer service to it. Like when you do an open house, get somebody to stage it. When you do the photos, get somebody to take them that's a professional photographer. Mm -hmm. um, and I only I've, I found one professional photographer so far, so I'm looking for another one because the lady sent me stuff that looks like screenshots when mm -hmm. you go through the Dropbox mm -hmm. or whatever that's called. Yeah. Um, you know, if it's land, get aerial photography, I can tell you that much. Um, you know, and also they want to know about community and, you know, where they're going to be living and all this kind of stuff. So you've got to help them sometimes to relocate. And then if they're relocating out of state, then you've got to find somebody in the KW network to refer them to. You know, there's, there's a lot more personal to it. Like, when we did open house, I put cookies in the oven mm -hmm. and stuff just to make it smell good. Mm -hmm. You know, not that it didn't smell good to begin with, but you know, I mean, mm -hmm. people like that kind of stuff. I mean, I could care less. I'll be honest with you. I, I, don't, I don't, I don't, I don't get into this emotional business, and that's my challenge. Well, I, for me, customer service is. Uh, I worked with Bob Fasella to buy my own house, mm -hmm. and the person I was with at the time was extremely taxing. Um, for Bob, Bob always showed up with the same temperament, ready to serve, ready to provide, uh, you know, service and his expertise, made us feel calm through the process, never felt pressured, pressured for two years he was buyer's agent. Uh, I've referred him to so many different people. I'm actually here today because of Bob's customer service. So um, I think not going in, feeling desperate that you need to, not everybody, I'm sure, in this agency would work with somebody a buyer for two years driving around Atlanta but Bob is just like that's my value proposition I'm going to go do that much extra for every person that I deal with even if it's a three hundred fifty thousand dollar home and it's not a million dollar home um, to me that is customer service um, so if you can add that kind of value at your clients you're going to have a huge referral business right. if you what about, I guess I got a question too I'm sorry mm -hmm from the buyer side, like from the buyer agent side, um, I guess I come in contact with a lot of women who are buying homes. Mm -hmm. And I think I struggle with 
the empathy part of when, you know, women are getting kind of like emotional sometimes, some of the clients, and I have a, I guess the obstacle is kind of like coddling them, like I don't, you know, because I'm kind of direct, mm -hmm. and sometimes, you know, I don't know, and I guess I don't want to cross the line and make it seem like I'm making a pass or I'm being, I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to cross the line, mm -hmm. but I also want to stay professional and it's just kind of like it's a fine line when it's a guy-woman relationship mm -hmm. and, you know, I just kind of, I kind of just kind of step back, but I don't want them that, I don't want them to think that I'm cold, mm -hmm. but I also don't want them to think that I'm crossing the line of trying to... You know, Give me an example of an emotional mm, type thing. I guess, you know, I had uh, a young lady, she was just, she was going through something as far as like um, boyfriend. Um, she had a guy she was dating and she was, she moved here to be with him and they were together for a while and then, you know, they were supposed to be doing, they were supposed to be doing this house buying process together mm -hmm. and then he dipped out on her. And, you know, she was just giving me a whole rundown of everything that was going on in her personal life mm -hmm. and how it's affecting the house, the home buying process. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, wow, I was like, I hate you going through that. You know, I just, and that's just the most that I would say. And that's fine. Okay. Yeah, that's fine, you know. And, and it is amazing the things that people will tell you. Yes. When they're in the car with sometimes you and things like talk. that, and sometimes mm -hmm. they just need to talk yeah. and vent. And so, but uh, you can't show empathy for anybody if you haven't been through it yourself, mm -hmm. right? Okay. So you can sympathize, but mm -hmm. empathy is a whole different thing. Mm -hmm. So, so just saying, I'm so sorry that you're going through that. Let me see how I can make your house buying process a smooth transaction that's all you got to say and then leave it at that you know she like just Carol wants said. to keep talking it <laughs> you know I mean you can listen but you don't necessarily have to buy into it you yeah. know that's not that's not customer service really right. you know so your customer service is things like not looking at them like a dollar sign Right? Mm -hmm. Right. Because right. as long as you don't look at somebody like a dollar sign, then you're going to win the day every time. Mm -hmm. Because I will tell you that um, the, the lowest I've ever sold was $50,000. He called um, us on one of our listings, and it was listed at one fifteen. And he called and he said, my mother passed away and I'm expecting an inheritance, but I'm not sure how much it's going to be. But, um, and it's gonna be in a month or so. And I said, well, we've already got this house. You know, we've got multiple bids on this house already. And um, why don't we just stay in touch? And he's like, okay. So he, you know, we did. We kept him on our email um, campaign. And then he called me out of the blue and he said, hey, it's Mark. And I said, hey, how are you doing? And he said, well, I found something I might want to buy, but I don't think you'll be interested in representing me. And I was like, why is that? And he said, well, you know, it's listed at 50000 And I said, listen, Mark, I said, if that's what you, the money that you have to spend on it, that's the money that you have to spend on it. And absolutely, we'll be happy to help you and do everything that we need to do. Um, so we actually ended up getting that house for him for thirty thousand oh, instead wow. of the fifty thousand. We lost money on it because we always attend every inspection and we attend every appraisal, and so and then we ended up having to close it all the way up in Cumming, Georgia, because it was in a trust. The house was in a trust, mm -hmm. and so we actually at, at the end of the day, three you know three percent of thirty thousand is nothing. So we lost money on it, but it was okay. We helped Mark right. for him to be a homeowner, you know, and that was the most important thing. And, and when you give, too. Yeah. yeah. And when you give, when you come from a place of contribution like that, it's always going to come back to you. Right. Always, always. always so to me, that's what I think of as customer service, mm -hmm. you know. And the and our job too is to keep emotions at bay, right? Yeah. Because there's things with every transaction. There's going to be something that goes wrong. Every transaction, I promise you. Mm -hmm. Every different sellers, different buyers, 
different inspection, different lender, you know, it's always going to be something that comes up. So the little things, just don't even worry your sellers or buyers with the little things. You know, just say to the agent, you know, if they call and you know that this is a little, little thing, then like, okay, let's work this out. Let's see, you know, what we can do to work this out. And then boom, you can get it worked out. It's the big things that you need to include everybody on. And what I mean by little things is like, um, the appraiser is not going to be there until tomorrow. He was scheduled for today. He's not going to be there tomorrow. That's a little thing, mm -hmm. right? Okay. No reason to make a big deal out of it, right? Um, the wind, the glass for the window hasn't come in yet. And so it's not going to be installed, you know, for a couple of days, and that's going to be after the inspection, but we've already got it taken care of. That's a little thing. You don't make a big deal out of it, you know. It's the big, so when you do that and you have a good tone, like you said, you know, Bob's tone was always the same and all that. Mm -hmm. When you have a good tone and you come across that way with people, then they're going to feed off of you because mm -hmm. you're leading them. That's what this is about, really, leading them, right? So as long as you can do that and you not get emotional, then you're good. And whatever fight you and the other agent get into, you don't need to let anybody know about that, mm -hmm. you know? And it's always better to take the high road. If the other agent wants to fight with you, let the other agent fight with you, but don't fight mm -hmm. back. There's no reason in it, no, no purpose. The other thing that always amazed me about Bob is he could be firm. And I was like, oh, that felt good. Like, he just made every mm -hmm. thing seem like, you know, he, he's got it. This this makes sense. Mm -hmm. But he was he would offer, like, oh, well, we can certainly do that with the price. Just know that, mm -hmm. you know, here's what mm -hmm. could possibly happen. So, you know, even when he was saying no, it sort of felt like a yes. Yeah. So that was my, that was yeah. my takeaway from yeah. And because, it, you know, really, ultimately, the decision is theirs, mm -hmm. right? So if they, if the house is listed at 200 and you know in today's market that, you know, probably up against a multiple bid situation, um, then if the house is in good location and decent condition, you want to let them know that up front, right? That this is probably where we're going to be. If you want to, if you want to offer 185, let me tell you what I think that we can expect, you know, and just walk them through that. And then you say, you know, ultimately it's your decision and I'll make that offer for you at 185, but this is, this is what you can expect. And do you really want the house, right? And this is just an example. Um, there was a beautiful house in the neighborhood right uh, near the perimeter. Um, there was multiple uh, offers and he knew that there was going to be multiple offers and he set the expectations that you know it's it's going to be a tough one we lost we ended up losing I mean, there was like s several years ago we ended up losing out by like maybe five six thousand dollars and he did his best to get us where we would have wanted literally he was making us feel better the next day and we're going to get it you know and, and it was another three to six months before we were able. it was that big of a buying frenzy mm -hmm. um, of course we've had beer since then he's like yeah I mean, that was crazy you guys should have. <laughs> but why he was my agent he never faltered even in the face of that kind of frustration so yeah that's a lesson I, I I'm hoping we yeah. learn people don't people don't ever most of the time they don't remember what you do for them they remember how you care about them mm -hmm. yeah, exactly yeah. so um all right so just try to put yourself in their shoes when you're you know on the on the, their realtor um why tell williams realty what would you tell somebody if you go on a listing appointment and you're up against another agency what would be the reason that you would tell somebody that they need to be with keller williams i would say because one keller williams is a household name uh, we're one of the largest brokerages here in Georgia, mm -hmm. um, not only here, but I mean just nationwide. I was just in uh, DR for my birthday in April, and as I'm going to the resort on the bus, I look up, and there's a Keller Williams sign in Dominican Republic, <laughs> you know, 
So I think a lot of times in this day and age, you got social media and um, this is that this the age and people always want to associate with what's popular. Mm -hmm. um, so that would be the angle or that might be my response. So. Okay, great. Anybody else? One of the, pardon me? The most experience. Okay, mm -hmm. great. So there, um, to back up you, Gerard, and what you were saying, mm -hmm. in Chart Masters, there is a slide in there that you can use for your listing presentation and with your buyers that talks about the Rawls group, mm -hmm. okay, and how we're the, we're the number one group mm -hmm. of all Keller Williamses in the state of, in the southeast region, okay, and that's huge. Yes, that's mm -hmm. huge, huge, huge. There's huge. a magnificent amount. Yeah, that's huge. Okay. And Williams. that our listings sell faster, and our prices we get higher list price ratio too. There's this a slide in there. Thing? It's in our KW intranet, not internet, not the KW internet. Our office intranet, and the, it's uh, under when you click on it. Then you go to documents, and then under documents you would go to chart masters, and the slide is in there. What's the tr what's the slide called, if you don't mind? Um, I'm just going to my head. Yeah, I okay, got you. <coughs> Can you <coughs> kind of pitch it also as an exclusive? Yeah, because, mm -hmm. I'm so you, sorry. You, you, no, you started first. I'm sorry. It's okay. Well, they're all good questions. <laughs> yeah. um, along that, I would, you know. We would like to say that you know uh, Keller Williams selects the best of the best, or that kind of thing. The best agents work for Keller Williams. I mean, that's kind of in the. I mean, obviously, we we all think of ourselves as good, but like, is that in that advertising lane of like, oh, that's sort of can't say that or, or. No, I mean we do. I mean honestly, um, I feel like our integrity mm -hmm. and us going. And doing the right thing is always the forefront of this company. Okay. Um, and I can absolutely say that about the Rawls Group, hands down. Yeah, and I, and I um, agree with that too. I just want to make sure we can see yeah. that in the listing presentation. Yeah. That's not a yeah. Papa John's better ingredients, better pizza mm -hmm. lawsuit kind yeah. of range. Yeah. No, I. You know, I mean, I don't know about that to be honest Perfect. with you, but I do know what I'm, I do know just just being around so long that it's always doing the right thing mm -hmm. and for agents that have joined our company and not done the right thing they're no longer with us so and the Rawls group has always gone over and beyond there's been times when I know that um, um, just a ten thousand dollar check was written to somebody because it, it was just like um, for example, an agent, um, this was several, several years ago, an agent that was with us was kind of homeless. We didn't know it at the time, okay? This was during the downturn too. This was during the crash. So agents were having, a, a lot of agents were having a really, really hard time, okay? A lot of agents, they did, they, you know, lost everything, yeah. right? Okay. Yeah. So she was she was homeless, and so she took a listing, and she was living in the listing, mm -hmm. okay, without anyone knowing. So the the lady lived out of town, and she got her electric bill or water bill and all that, and it was like what the heck, mm -hmm. right? And so when this was brought to the Rawls Group's attention, obviously, Rawls Group wrote a check to her for all the expenses and fired the agent, obviously. You know, I mean, because you just have to do the right thing. So I just know from the bottom of my heart that the Rawls Group always does the right thing when it comes to customer service. Yeah, and they will back up their agents too when it's necessary to back up their agents, always. Yeah, it is. But um, always, I mean, there's been a lot of times too when um, an agent has come up against, you know, something that was not um, in the realm of doing the right thing, not on our agent side, but on the other agent side, and then the backup power that you have with being with this office, you know, taking a stand and saying, no, our agent is right. So, 
you're gonna always feel comfortable with that. Um, reliability, the track record, the knowledge. You know, it's amazing the things that our company knows and being able to kind of um, see the future, so to speak. You know, just because keeping up with the stats and keeping up with the market and seeing where things are going and things like that. Um, so you can really learn a lot. Um, here's the guy that's selling your house. So technology, teamwork, that goes on what we were just talking about. The great thing is you've got enough people surrounding you in this office that if you come up against a question that you don't have an answer for, you always say, you know what, I don't know the answer to that, but I will find out the answer. You can reach out to me, you can reach out to Stacy, you can reach out to Diane, Felicia, Brad. I mean, there is somebody that can answer that question for you. Okay? Um, <clears throat> and so, and there's enough of us around too to show you how to do something when you don't know how to do something. Right? So, the support is phenomenal. Um, there's a page of what you get from me. I always think like what you say about being direct. It's always best to be direct with someone. Doesn't mean that the way it, you can be direct, it's a matter of your tone, right? Mm -hmm. Of how, you, how you're gonna be direct. But I always answer your questions openly and honestly and very direct. People appreciate that, right? Because if you try to fluff it, all they're gonna do is Google it, yeah. okay? Mm -hmm. You know? Um, That person's needs always come first. First, experience and expertise, marketing, pricing. Mm. Okay, technology, staging, satisfaction. Um, let's see, servicing and marketing. Okay, so um, there is a 14-step marketing plan on mykw.com um, that you can actually pull down and add into your marketing if you choose to do that. I would highly recommend that you read through that marketing plan and if there are things that you don't want to do in that marketing plan, take them out. Don't say something and not do it. Don't have something in writing and not do it, right? That's gonna not help your reputation at all. Uh, offers and negotiations, okay, so you know that you have to present every offer right yeah. and then you'll discuss it with someone you'll discuss it with them right and just make sure that you constantly when you're sending over the offer that in your email you say please read through this before you sign it because mm -hmm. I guarantee you in two minutes you're gonna have signatures and they have not read it mm -hmm. right and that covers you from a liability standpoint yeah you yeah. You always want to make sure that you give them to listen. Take the time you need. Make sure you review this. Circle back to me if you want to make any changes. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So keep everything in writing. Right. Everything. Even even text conversations. You know, if I'm working with the seller, if I'm working with the buyer, the text conversations I let upload them and keep them in a file. Because you never know when somebody's going to say something different. Right. <clears throat> All right, so um, contract to close, coordinating all of that stuff. A smooth closing. Okay, so what kind of things do you tell your seller or your buyer that's gonna happen at closing? Y'all know what happens at closings. Right. Pardon me? Yes. Yes. I just want to get our check. You're gonna get your check. Hopefully, yes. <laughs> um, okay, so one of the things that you wanna do is you wanna always, as soon as you get a contract, um, you've got an offer, and the closing attorney that is listed on the front, you wanna get that contract, and that purchase and sell agreement, all disclosures and everything sent over to that closing attorney. You wanna call and make and schedule the time for the closing. Before you call and schedule the time for the closing, you just want to confirm with the other agent and their clients that time will work, okay?
So it's in the spirit of corporation that you do this. Any amendment that comes in that everybody has to sign, you have to get that over to the closing attorney as well as the lender, okay? Unless it is the inspection amendment. You do not have to get that over to the closing attorney unless, I mean, not the closing attorney, you do not have to get that over to the lender unless you have amendment, no, if amendment number one is your inspection, right, and then you have to do another amendment and amendment number two and you've sent that over to the lender, guess what the underwriter is going to ask for? Amendment, amendment number one, mm -hmm. okay? So all amendments have to be in sequence. So if the lender has expect, in, amendment number three and two, they're going to come back and say, where's amendment number one? Mm -hmm. All right, so your inspection amendment, you gotta make sure it's written properly, okay? Because if the underwriter sees something on there that they don't like, then it can be kicked back. So we'll talk about that further and learning how to write these amendments and all that, you'll learn all of that too, okay? So I would highly recommend that whenever Lynn uh, LaCroix, our qualifying broker, is teaching classes mm -hmm. on writing purchase and sell agreements and amendments that you come to those classes okay and if there's a question that you ever have you can always email myself Stacy you know or Lynn too as well okay all right um at closing you need to make sure that you're that they have their IDs mm -hmm. okay their legal ID or a legal passport and it has to be up to date it cannot be expired all right. Um, make sure that the wire, any funds that need to be uh, wired to the closing attorney, they need to do that probably the day before, just to make sure it gets there. Yes, ma'am. I have a quick question. Talking about wiring and having passport, like working with overseas customers or clients, how do you, have you done that before? What's that? And how does it work? Working with overseas, somebody living overseas oh, yeah, yeah. and wanting to buy a property or mm -hmm. a house here in America. Mm -hmm. They do the a mail away closing, okay? And a mail away closing, you have to let the closing, the, the um, usually there's two attorneys involved. Mm -hmm. There is the closing attorney here in the States, right? And so they oversee all that and they create a mail out package that goes to another attorney to at where that person is at or someone else that can oversee that, okay? Sometimes, um, like I've, I've sold to people that were stationed in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. You know, they were buying a house and they were stationed in Afghanistan. And so uh, the VA will allow that as long as they know that they're gonna be, you know, stationed back here within a couple of months. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but the way that that worked was that they just did a mail out closing to that person in Afghanistan or sometimes they get a power of attorney mm -hmm. so like a family or relative or brother or sister or whatever that can sign the paperwork for them okay good uh, question I have a question uh, kind of along the lines of that um, I have a friend and he's stationed out in like Fort Lewis which is out in like Washington State yeah. And he's wanting, he's retiring um, in January, starting mm -hmm. January. So he reached out to me and he wants me to, I guess, sell him a home, but he wants to do a brand new build. Mm -hmm. So how would I come into play if he wants to, I guess, purchase land and then build from the ground up on that land? Would I just sell him the land mm -hmm. and then for the house part for him building the home how does that does he have to just find his builder and mm -hmm. then if he wants if he wants a custom build like yes. that yes um then you you can find the land for him and then you can find some builders to recommend to him mm -hmm. for him to contract with the builders but basically it would just be the land part that okay. you would be dealing with gotcha. if he wants a new build in the subdivision which is more your standard yeah. is what they're you know then you can be a part of all of that where you know he would pick out the lot and then pick out yeah. the floor plan and then they do all all the building and everything yeah, yeah. yeah. If he wants to play and wants to build custom yeah most most people that are military want land yeah they want to be away 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So I was yeah. questioning that. So thank you. Thank You're you. welcome. Another question, please. For instance, let's say the person is not an American. Mm -hmm. Not that they are stationed elsewhere, but they're just not even an uh, American. Yes, ma'am. And they want to buy properties here. Yes, ma'am. Not having any legal documents mm -hmm. as American documents. Mm -hmm. That's still possible, right? There I are that some in class, but uh, I'm trying to get a, a full understanding of the whole process. There are some lenders that will qualify some, you know, people that are do not have any documentation. It is lender specific, though. I w I'm talking about cash buyers. Cash buyers. Somebody from another country. Yeah, but they have, have a passport. Like investment property that have money that want to buy. It. But they they have a passport, right? Not American passport, passport from their country. That's fine. That's fine. It just has to be a legal ID. I like see. it can be it can be a passport from any other country as long as it's not expired. Okay, but what if the person cannot come over? Doesn't have a visa to come over. Then it would be a mail away closing. I see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just me. Yeah. You just have to notify the closing attorney that is going to be a mail away closing. Okay. And okay. the payment will be like a wire transfer. Yes. Yes. Well, everything now is a wire transfer. Mm -hmm. Okay. Even with um, a local mm -hmm. buyer, it's going to be a wire transfer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Isn't there a program for those that want to come into the country and acquire their visa? Isn't there a program for those folks to come in and purchase homes? I forgot what it's called. I don't know. There might be. I think there might be. Mm -hmm. Like I mean, through buying a property right? here, you get to become. Like, of course, if you buy, you wouldn't want to come and leave. Mm -hmm. Right, right. That's what so, I'm saying. Mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. I think there's a And you don't have no legal document. So what do you do? I think How do you find out about that? Um, I've got an underwriter that's a really good friend of mine. Okay. Um, I can call on a fast Yes, and ask please. Her. Yes, okay. please. Thank you. No worries. Um, okay. So, condition. We talked about that. Marketing the house to buyers. Price of the house. We talked about all that. Right here on page 51 is the 14 step marketing plan. So I would just recommend that you go through that and make sure that that's all you want to do. Then on page 53 are some of the top sites that it goes to. Talk about price, talked about that. Comparative properties, we've talked about that. I think we've basically talked about everything that's left. Is there, does anyone have any questions? Mm. Any aha moments? Yes. Was okay, what are your aha moments? Mm -hmm. When you told us about the um, program that you have, that puts your listing information out into the world on Roku and all of those things. I'm very, very curious about that. Okay. I feel like if we have listings, we're, we're only limited to the point that we can attract attention to those listings. Mm -hmm. So that was my aha moment. Okay, good. Anyone else? Any other aha moments? That was mine too. I Okay. <laughs> 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 you said it was just twelve dollars a month. Yeah. So okay. A hot moment was how to say no. How to say no? Yeah. 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 I thought just yeah. no. I knew that was going to be an issue for you. Actually, mm -hmm. yeah. I knew that because you're just yeah. too I, sweet. I just like to like please people. Like, and I try to find my way to make people just happy, and mm -hmm. I, I do whatever I can. And, and it's really hard for me to say, I can't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's just even like, so like, it's just hard. Mm -hmm. I'd much rather say. have that than, I really don't like people. I, I like saying no, I mean, you know. Exactly. Yeah, it's it's much easier to have the charisma and the personality yeah. and just learn to train yourself. Yeah, to, yeah, totally. But, but you get caught in those little moments when you're like, oh, he wants this and I can I just, I, it, you know what? They look at it like this. Look at it as just um, don't say what you're gonna do. You know, just just 
and then whatever you do extra is just like a cherry on top. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So pair everything down and then do extra. And then, and then it's gonna be yeah. I mean, yeah. Follow the plan, but have my eggs on the side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but yeah. When people say like the market, it thinks that you can actually not do like leaving the market plan. Like, yeah. I guess I'm gonna use the policy thing. Sorry, that's a, a policy or mm -hmm. group. Yeah. We just not don't share the market. Yeah. Well, yeah. hold on. Let me ask I my need husband. to blame someone else. Hello, honey. Yes. No. Okay. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. Bad cop, good cop. Bad cop, good cop. Bad cop, good cop. That's what I've been doing. I always <laughs> have no. Oh, Chris, say no. I'm so sorry. I don't know why. But <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> He's not nice. <laughs> oh, yeah. This, this, this well, y'all don't want to go on listing appointments together anyway. So <laughs> yeah. when somebody says that, just look at Chris and Chris got no. And I said, no, it's not happening. <laughs> so my, my aha moment was that my wife thinks I'm an asshole. No. <laughs> <laughs> my aha moment is the aggregate of all the little business hacks you're giving us. Because you probably took a year or two to learn little things like, you know, the color coding of your, mm -hmm. your, your calendar. Or just little things that you say mm -hmm. to the, the your potential customer that sets expectations yeah. because that's really hard as a new agent. So we're really listening to that, and uh, you know, those are great business mm -hmm. hacks that are going to mm -hmm. shave off a couple and years. I think, yeah, years. and I think if we start like getting used to it and creating systems mm -hmm. like Gary says, mm -hmm. when we start growing, it's going to be easier to transfer that knowledge to the new people that is coming. This mm -hmm. is where we do, this yeah. is why people like us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is the expectations that we set. Yeah, exactly. That and looks great, by the way. Yeah, right and there. here's the other couple of little things too to, to help. Um, so <clears throat> when you, not necessarily in the beginning, but if you get in the habit of it in the beginning, if you um, send in an offer on something, always make the time limit of offer at the same time, okay? So if you make the time limit of offer, let's say at four o'clock in the afternoon, right? And the reason for that, if you've got, let's say you've got two or three contracts out there at one time, and you've made time limit of offer, one, one of them is out, two o'clock, one of them is at one o'clock, and one of them is at four o'clock. Oh my gosh, which one is at four? Which one is at one, you know, okay. Here's the other thing. So if you sit, set, you know, you know in your mind already, okay, time limit offer is at four o'clock today, right? So now you're lead generating in the morning, so nothing is disturbing your lead gen time. So now here it is, 12 noon, so now you can pay attention to the offer, right? Mm -hmm. So the whole thing is protecting that lead gen time. Because if you're not constantly lead generating on a daily basis, mm -hmm. you are going to do the roller coaster. And the majority of agents get out of the business because they're doing the roller coaster instead of having, you know, one to two to three to four to five, six closings a month, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So that's the goal, right? Mm -hmm. Because if you um, are only having closings every other month or every three months, I mean, sometimes you can go hungry. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to see any of you guys go hungry. So you got to lead gen. I mean, that's your number one job. That is your number one job. That is your number one job to do. Everything else falls to administrative stuff. So when you've got, <clears throat> then the other thing on your calendar when you're color coding it, and you've got offers out, the first thing you do when, you get, when you've got that offer under contract, now you're going to go into your calendar and you're going to say binding agreement, I mean, um, binding agreement date was this date. And then you're going to say due diligence is up on this date, right? You're going to put it on there, right? You're going to say inspection is scheduled for this date. You're going to say financing contingency is up on this date. Appraisal contingency is up on this date. You know, you're going to put all those dates in your calendar so you know. What CRM do you use to keep track of that? Do you have a low-level CRM, or are you just using Excel spreadsheets? I used to use Top Producer okay. because because Top Producer was the original CRM mm -hmm. for agents. Sure. Um, the, since I've been out of the business, and I. Um, no, of I don't I don't have one now. I don't use Top Producer or anything like that. 
But since um, a lot of my agents that I coach, they're using Referral Maker. Referral Maker. Referral Maker. Um, Dominique uses Lion Desk. She really likes Lion Desk. Um, and then that's the that's the two top. Some people like Constant Contact. That's more of like just email yeah, marketing. Yeah. And, and yeah. Something I did with one of the universities I worked for, I implemented Salesforce.com. Mm -hmm. And the, I mean, obviously that's a huge, robust enterprise right. software, but we would like something where we can keep track of our notes so that we continue the conversations. It's with a true customers. CRM. Yeah, um, you want a true C CRM. Well, not starting out, we'd like a light CRM, but just something we can keep track. Yeah. I want to make sure when we have that phone call or that follow up, we're continuing the conversation and, and the points and the pain points they have and everything. It, it's just a continuum, even though it's been a week since we've talked. To, um, so, but some place that I can put it all in one yeah. place, the phone calls, the just the keeping track of our database. I, right. I know Kelly's going to have something coming up. Well, like that's, that, Kelly is, you're talking about command. Uh -huh. So command, when command is fully functional, the, it will be a CRM. Okay. When it's fully functional. But right now, um, and then there's two different legs of Referral Maker. Mm -hmm. Referral Maker um, is a CRM, but then they will also try to upsell you to get you to buy the materials that they send to you every month that are note cards and different flyers and stuff sure. to send. You don't need that. Mm -hmm. you know? nah. Yeah, you don't need that marketing We're piece. looking for something that's like a combination of e-marketing, mm -hmm. but also when you're making your cold calls, and it has a central database that you're building everything around. So all your touch points mm -hmm. are connected at the same point. And I was just wondering if agents, if maybe Lion Desk will look into that and referral maker, if those those kind of fit the bill with maybe a low, obviously we all are starting, so we want the, the low code, low to free cost point. Right, yeah. well E-Edge, which is in my KW, okay. E-Edge is set up, there's um, your eight by eights in there and your 33 touch programs are in there, your anniversary, birthday cards, all mm -hmm. of that stuff is in there for marketing. Um, and you can, and your 12 direct newsletter, all that's in the edge. And you can put notes and stuff in there next mm -hmm. to people's names and all. Yes. So that's a very basic program that is free okay. for you being part of KW. Um, it will change when command comes on board and command is going to be fully functional CRM more so mm -hmm. than e edge is more like an email platform you know that you can go ahead and get your database set up and things in there you can write notes but it doesn't remind you when to call people and things like that like a CRM yeah, does and then, yeah so when command comes on board do you know in terms of if others if we're all on a different CRM is there going to be some portability in terms of migration? From, oh yeah, oh yeah. Okay, so it'll be if we're working out there on you know line desk if we can go to dot c csv or whatever yeah. we have to do to be able yeah. to yeah yeah you'll be able to upload and actually you can already start putting contacts into command I like okay that. but the what we call the smart plans which are more your thirty three touch eight by eight and some of the other yeah. capabilities on command are not ready yet. What's the timeline for that? Do you know? Um, I don't know. I'm going back out to Austin in August okay. for more um, for what we call Mega Camp, mm -hmm. which okay. I would recommend Mega Camp to anybody. It's phenomenal. Okay. Um, and it's so it's August. I fly out on August the 12th, and I'm out there all week. August 12th to the 16th, I think. Yeah. Um, that's something that everybody who is a KW agent can participate in? It's yeah, even agents that are not with KW, sometimes they'll come. Right. But um, So we have two conventions a year. So the first one is in February and it's called um, Family Reunion. Mm -hmm. Right, Family Reunion is more like what it says, Family Reunion. Um, and that is always the state of the company with um, Gary Keller and things like that too. And there's also learning opportunities and breakout sessions and things like that on different things. But Mega Camp to me is, it's my favorite because it is nothing but learning sessions like all day long. You know, you're together, you're meeting other agents and you're learning and you're listening to panels of agents that are expertise and investors or, you know, agents that are working with 
Paula Williams Mortgage, um, you know, just um, or you know, agents that specialize in working in social media, you know, what they're doing, how it's working. Mega Camp is phenomenal. I uh, really, yeah. So I would, if you can't go this year, I would definitely save up to try to go next year. And possibly, you know, even family reunion. Family reunion is really great too. Always, but I love Mega it's Camp. It's always in August? Mega Camp is always in August. Mm -hmm. Of the two, which do you think would be better for new agents? Mega Camp. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah this And I'm sure the hotels and everything book up pretty quick. So. Um, I don't know. Felicia just made our reservations last week. Felicia? Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, you can reach out. So when you go into mykw.com, go um, to the right hand side of the website and it says events and it'll and then it'll show you where Mega Camp and the hotels that you can get a discount on. But to be honest with you, sometimes I have gotten a better discount just through like hotels.com, you know, than some of the yeah. But Austin's a pretty big city, mm -hmm. so you could, and I mean, the last time I went, we airbnb it. You know, right next to the convention center, you could, I mean, it's downtown Austin, mm -hmm. and we were able to, uh, air, we airbnb would a, a condo, and I think we paid like $200 a night for it or something. You guys had to obviously rent a car that too, because it wasn't that close, or was it close enough? The uh, air. The taxi ride or the Uber mm -hmm. uh, isn't all that expensive from the airport. I think oh. we it's about thirty bucks maybe. Okay. Because the airport into Austin is not that far. But you can literally walk to the convention center and walk to all the restaurants and everything so in I'm Austin. Here, I hear, I'm hearing events and it's not letting me like click on the. the mm. Click on the oh. red. Yeah. It's not? I don't see her. You're on Chrome, okay. I don't know what's going on with that. Well, Felicia's probably yeah. Felicia's yeah, yeah. person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. What else? Anything else? Oh, don't forget to fill out your reviews. Okay. And give those uh, to Stacy. Anything else? Any questions? Any comments? Thank you. You're yes, welcome. Thank you. very, very You're welcome. Much. You're welcome. You're very welcome. No. Very welcome. Um, all right. Thanks, guys. I enjoyed teaching you guys. Y'all have an awesome one. I look forward to seeing all the listings we're going to be getting here soon. Hopefully. You can do it! Totally. Mm -hmm. You can do it. All right, y'all have a good one. All right, you too. You too. Oh, Terry. Yes. You said to stop by your office for that Roku information. Yes. Where's your okay. office? I'll email it to you. Actually. Thank you. Okay. Where's your Do office? Do you have all my emails? Um, I don't have your email. Okay. Um, you want to text it to me? Yes. Okay. What's your number? Six seven eight two seven zero seven one one zero. Thank you. You're welcome. I don't think I have your email either. Okay. You want to text it to me? Alright. 678 270 7110. Thank you so yes. much. Oh, yeah. You're welcome. Absolutely. Alright, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye, Terry. Does anyone in our class know how many offices are in the Rawls group? Seven, I think. Mm -hmm. And where they're located? Um, Is there an IE or the I? IE. IE. Okay. Ms. Carol, may I have your number? Ms. Carol? Yes. May I have your number? Certainly. It's 404. Seven three one. Oh, sorry. I'll wait. Yeah, 
Okay. okay. Two one four three. Mm -hmm. Okay. Seven three one two one four three. Yes. And for your investors that are coming in from uh, other countries mm -hmm. and they're doing a you know, like a mail away closing. Um, if they're wanting to do duplexes, income producing properties, anything like that, mm -hmm. uh, which is sometimes pretty popular, mm -hmm. they'll want to do a duplex or a quad. That's exactly what I'm looking at. Okay. I, I have a lot of those. Mm -hmm. um, happy to work with you. Okay. And um, I can and brush up on my French. Yeah. Right. Don't, <laughs> okay. Don't forget to ask the underwriter. I will, and I'll call, uh, if you could text me I, your number, I'm hi, this is me, mm -hmm. I will have Karen, her name is Karen Davis, mm -hmm. she's actually uh, an amazing human, she serves as our financial person for the 501c3 nonprofit, mm -hmm. did you know that she has been Vice President of Operations for Wells Fargo, National City Mortgage, mm -hmm. I mean she mm -hmm. knows it like, like the back of her mm -hmm. hand, so she'll be able to give you okay. quick, effective information. Uh, also, if anybody has any commercial stuff that they need any help with, or if they have anybody that has a 1031 exchange situation that they need help with, mm -hmm. that's what I want to know. About. Please what is call me. 1031. Okay. 1031 exchanges are very interesting and extremely detailed, and there's really no way to say, you know, cookie cutter is a chocolate chip cookie with almonds or pecans because each scenario is going to be different. I don't the even rules, know what it is. the rules are basically the same. What it is is, let's say you have this problem, okay, and you're going to sell it and you're going to make $5 million off of it. Okay. Okay? And you may have basis points on that property when you sell it or you've had it in conservation so that you're going to have, like, tag taxes, basically, okay? Um, and your tax so you structure is yet? better, okay? Yeah. Yeah. If you take the five hundred yeah. or the five million dollars yeah. that you're going to walk away with cash it. money, we're you're going to have to pay that to our uncle priorities because yeah. it is income right. right. that you gain. Right. It's capital gains, mm -hmm. okay? Right. A way to the avoid capital gains is using a ten thirty one exchange vehicle. It's a part of the IRS tax code. Okay, I work for. It gives you the opportunity to say, hey. I want to take my which five is, million, which is an easy way and I want to go buy like, this yeah. apartment oh, property over here, but, uh, okay? And I'm going to go buy ten duplexes over here. Okay, that's five million. I have not gained anything. I have put that five million dollars up in something else. So now I don't have to pay capital gains. I may have to pay basis. I may have to pay conservation. I may have to pay other stuff. But I'm not going to have to pay big taxes 80% or better on five million dollars. Because I've been seeing that. On listing Maria, mm -hmm. and I was like, I need mm -hmm. to. But, like but you have to be sharp CEO on this. And, and yes. Okay, this e is something that you can L L right at L all. Right. Because it can cost yeah. your buyers money. Mm -hmm. I mean, hard lots of money. Oh no, I wouldn't. If you make a mistake and you don't tell them exactly <laughs> what the story is. The name of yeah, your yeah. No, if I had, if I came across that, I'm definitely calling you or somebody who's well versed in that oh, yeah. to walk me through that. Once you right. burn it, yeah, you just have to hit the top left thing. I'm just saying, I'm new now. I don't know why they think that's now. I've been on the phone and I need it right there. It's always like embarrassing. I've got it. 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 I've got you put that in so writing and you cover the yourself. Spanish keyboard on my phone and yeah, then I'll just be like, yeah, I mean, <laughs> the investor guy I was telling you about. Mm. So I was like, hey, I so if um, this waterproofing company okay. gives you a good number to waterproof this basement on this property uh, tomorrow, at, at uh, the you know, I said, and you said you want to oh, make okay. an offer. Perfect. I was like, will you be able to show proof of funds? Yeah. And he was like, yeah. yeah. He said, I already Absolutely. have that lined you know, up. He was like, the only thing we need to do is just send the hard one and my family address. Years, we're both and then he can provide wow. us wow. any funds and everything that you, you know, need. Like, perfect. We can do it too. So I still may be calling you to help me out. I'll walk you through that portion. You know, so, and absolutely. So finally, um, what's the question? And likewise, we have a, her aunt. I know you gave me a Six, seven, eight. Construction. Gosh, everybody's like, oh, nice. For residential houses, so if you have any clients that are like, Designs for me. Six, seven, zero. Seven, eight, five, eight. I knew I said I was going to create this. So what I'm going to do is remove me. 
in this room. That would be a great idea. I took a lot of notes and like our own little notes too. Mm -hmm. so. If you need like, like so I was having while we were going through the class. Uh, I'm going to say please take You said to her? I'm sorry. No, that's okay. What's our schedule? We're trying to get lunch. We have class at 130. Okay. 130? So that it's I can practice. Can I leave my computer here? Yeah. 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 And then that way, when well, you say, hey, I need you to call the wall, I can go, oh, yeah, that day, the, one of the duplex. Mm -hmm. We're just going to leave our computers right there. You know, oh, it's a their blood type or anything. Yes, a for a major sentence for an FMLS. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, in commercial, I didn't will kick my, <laughs> what's left of this, what's mm -hmm. okay, if it's I don't get on. my stuff. It's from 30, you know what I'm saying? Because that's, I think I got to be on board. Right. If I'm helping you, then I need to know who it is. And what the deal is. Otherwise, he will be a big alligator. Gotcha. I yeah. think I'll have another opportunity to take that. Yeah, we're, we're out. We're we we're good. Yes. Okay, does anybody go to Goldberg's Bagels? Anyone? Goldberg's? Uh, um, Deli? Bagels? Okay, sorry. I was going to give you a bagel card. You want to do Goldberg's? Because okay. I have an extra. Thank you. Very kind of you. Okay, next question. Does anyone have a location in their mind that they've passed or that they might know of or that a friend of theirs might know of or family member that would be a great location for a nightclub? Anyone have a location for a nightclub in Atlanta? If somebody wants to build one from the ground up? No, some, well, something that's already existing, like uh, maybe it's a restaurant, and it could also be turned into a nightclub, mm -hmm. or maybe it's I know of one that's not far from my house that's already standing. And it's a nightclub? It's been a nightclub. Uh, it's been a nightclub, yeah. All right. And it's already pretty much set up to be a nightclub, but it's been vacant for a few years now. How's the property? I mean, how's the parking? It's a huge parking lot. Heck yeah. Send it to me. Hello. Hello. And I'll give you a referral. Hello. All right. Okay. Yeah, because it's just been sitting there, and I was like, hmm. Is it an indicator? No, it's a uh, East Point. Please it's send the, it to me. It's in the uh, Greenbrier Mall parking lot. Yes. Yeah, send okay. it to me. All right. Okay. I don't know where it is. I'll go get the address today. Cool. I live over there, so. We've got a restaurant tour that really wants a nightclub. Yeah. And we're going to make it happen. All right. I know that's a weird question, but hey, it's what he wants. <laughs> no, 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 that's not a weird question. Um, I can send you the, uh, the deets on it. Uh, and then I can teach you how to research who owns that property. Yeah. So that you know that. Yeah. And then um, we'll pick Terry's brain to find out how to get the numbers okay. of people that own it. Yeah. Like I was asking before. Yeah. Because um, you'd be surprised, man. Did you know that the government takes property from people? Yeah. That whole thing that we learned when we got our yeah. license, yeah. you know, the S cheat yeah. stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember that by cheat you out of your stuff. That's cheat what I mean. Yep. Yeah. Anyway, uh, <laughs> they take it, and then it's hard as heck mm. to find out like who who to call and all that kind of stuff. If they haven't already taken it, because you got to call trust. You find out I just yeah. used like a uh, courthouse and all the Yeah, I was, uh, I was trying to buy some properties in my hometown, Augusta. Mm -hmm. And uh, just so it happened that one of my homeboys, like we grew up together, we went to high school together. Mm -hmm. He's the director of the Augusta Housing Authority. So okay. I just called him, like, hey man, can you give me a list of all the properties that belong to the county that, you know, people have paid their taxes on or whatever? If you got somebody that's in there, all right, they can send you that list. And it's the addresses and it shows you how much is, it might be 10000 bucks for. Mm -hmm. Who's that? The house on for the county? Mm -hmm. County housing for each one. person or like a director or what? Well, the guys that I know, he's a director. But well, we went to high school together. Um, but he's the director of the housing authority in, a, in my hometown. But 
matrix for FMLS. Oh, they have to get out of there. I guess just. I'm going to start to walk in.